This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code ROOSTERTEETH. That's offer code ROOSTERTEETH at squarespace.com. This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash roosterteeth. Audible.com slash roosterteeth. I called it. Hey, everyone. Welcome oh, to the podcast. Wow. This week with Gus, Gavin, Barbara. Bernie and Hi. Gus, Gavin, get that shit out of here. They told you to wear it, not to fucking. He's just throwing it in their face now. <laughs> they got raw anger on Gus. Go. Get it out Gus of here. Gus yanked the shirt away from him. Um, I Gus is holding an R and R connection shirt. I'm it's a near. little angry. I'm gonna Why? admit it. Why? Because I keep getting something pointed out to me repeatedly. I guess there was someone who is super popular on Vine, has a had a Tumblr. Go ahead. Deleted his Tumblr. And someone else squatted oh. it and put up the picture of me naked drinking the beer in Jeff's house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is getting tweeted to me about every 15 seconds. Sorry. Hey, have you have you seen <laughs> this? Do you know about this? Have you heard about this? I fu One, I don't care about Vine. Two, I don't care about Tumblr. Three, I don't give a shit. I didn't even know who this guy was. There was some guy named Nash? I, yeah, Nash? I don't know. And now I got this fucking shit. <laughs> so I'm in, a, I'm in a great mood. Do people still use Vine? It's dead, right? We don't. There, uh, the Streamy Awards which are the online video awards, which happen oddly like once every year and a half to Probably two years. Like every two years, yeah. It's not quite biannual, but it's it's a weird thing. Horseshit. Anyway, they have a Vine category, which is Viner of the Year <laughs> and Best Vine Channel of the Year, which is, are those the same thing, <laughs> really? That's they, so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dumb. Well, we're not one Viner, technically. No, but so. we're, I mean, we're different across the board. Like that from just about everybody. Yeah. Like every every YouTube channel is pretty much just one person. The only other group that's kind of like us seems to be like College Humor. Rocket Jump. Ro Source said. Rocket Jump. But even Freddie W started Rocket Jump. And it was, they even, they right. fell in the trap where yeah. they are a group of people, but they seem like one dude. Yeah, I mean, for a long time, their YouTube channel was Freddie W. It was Freddie W. they Fred had w. to change it to yeah. Rocket Jump. If our YouTube channel was Bernie B, I would have quit about 11 and a half oh, years God. ago. Missed opportunity <laughs> you know, across the board. Their channel is still Rocco B64. I know that. <laughs> That's so weird. What is what is the closest you've come to quitting? The you must have thought about it at some Quinn. point. Rooster teeth. Quitting in 12 years. Rooster teeth. Um, there must have been a point. I'm sure. It was probably on a red eye in the middle of nowhere <laughs> where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? You know? Really? Yeah. I, I, Fucking hate red eye flights. Red eye flights are, of course, when you get on the plane at night and you sleep and you Why land in the morning. Why do you say of morning. course? Well, you say of Some course that's know. what it is. I don't know. I only know what that is. Talking to idiots out there who tell me about stupid vine people and their goddamn tumblers. <laughs> no, but you, the way you explained it, you said a red eye is of course when you get on a plane yeah. at midnight. Red, red eye. Wouldn't that be the midnight flight? Is of course when you get on at midnight. That's the, the equivalent of saying, I, I took a red eye. A red eye is a flight that flies through the night. Do you mean when you say of course? Would you say uh, or would you say of course or obviously? Yeah. Well, what you're you really say saying obviously. is you're stupid. Yeah. But I'm going to explain this to you. Yeah. Well, oh, I, of oh. course. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, what <laughs> sometimes what you're trying to do is not make the other person think that you think that they're dumb. So you're saying it's a limiting thing of like, well, of course you understand this. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you anyway. Like, you know that's what it is. You know but I'm just going to repeat it just so we're, we're all clear. Is it like that video page? you gave us for the recap one time where you're like, I'm Gavin Free, of course. No, I was making fun of uh, Lindsay obviously? because, because <laughs> she, she, I, she said, can you do this intro for this thing? And I was like, all right, I'm Gav. Uh, here's a clip of Barbara. And then Lindsay was like, hey, can you say that you're Gav from the slow-mo guys? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I was like, I'm Gav from the slow-mo guys, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> but it came off so douchey yeah. because it's just like, <laughs> you should know, know who what you're I going am. for, right? Yeah. Sure it's, it uh, it's the Gervais thing because I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Oh. Yeah, lucky you. Never mind. Good to see me. <laughs> what a good time you had. But listen, talking about something that is annoying you on Twitter or on social media in general, that is that nobody cares and you're just going to get more of it. Yeah. I mean, really, I know you want to vent, but I have now stopped the whole straw man thing of like, I'm going to explain to you a problem that I'm having and then I'm going to tell you why I'm mad about the problem because all that does is just nobody gives a shit. You're the only one going through it. Like I'm not getting those tweets. I think I, I think I did get one of them, 
but you're the only one getting them, and you're just going to get more of them now. Yeah. So it's really well, just... Well, it'll make me angrier, and then I'll have more to talk about. Just don't look at Twitter for a week. I don't see the, everyone's problem when it comes to that. Just don't look. Just don't look. Just don't look. <laughs> just don't look. Is that something? That was great. But fuck. I got nothing over here. <laughs> You're running on empty. So <laughs> Are you okay? You seem like I'm, I'm, I'm not in a good mood. I just love angry Gus, so I'm trying to fuel it even. We had a great day, Gus. We did have a great day. We played some last. I did something earlier. that I never do. And work. then I made. I, I talked about yesterday <laughs> about how I fucking liked Last of Us so much, and it was a gorgeous game. I got so many people saying, "Oh, look at that fucking paid uh, paid tweet." You know, oh, we yeah. sponsorship. Like, I just like the we game, We get that all man. the time in videos. Whenever we say we like a game... You're not allowed they, to like anything anymore. Yeah, they say it's so obvious that we're getting paid to say we like it. Don't, I, I'm pretty sure you have to say if you're getting paid, don't you? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we try to whenever we, we have something that's sponsored. We try to call it out as being sponsored. We very clearly have ad reads that I read every week. Yeah, very that clearly. That are paid for. That so I don't have today to I finished about. a video early, and uh, I just played... For, like, the whole afternoon, I played The Last of Us with... Bernie Burns and Gus and Michael and we kicked ass. I've got a bone to pick with Mr. Burns about who is his <laughs> etiquette when it comes to <laughs> inviting me to play video games. Why? He <laughs> earlier this afternoon Bernie texted me, "Come join our Last of Us game." Yes. I said, "Where?" He said, "PS4." <laughs> <laughs> Just mind the fucking and PS4. Michael, Never mind, join the game. <laughs> I'm like, "What?" Okay, now lobby. I was like, "You have a PS4 for me? I don't have one here." No reply. Oh, I didn't miss that last one. <laughs> Red 4.04 p.m. We had an epic... <laughs> we had, when we stopped playing. We, we had an epic run today in Last of Us. I didn't lose a single game. I got dropped from one game. I told the game Michael, you... Michael and I discussed that you were going to bring this up. But go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I got dropped and you lost. I, I think that says quite <laughs> a lot Was it a let's play? It. Or was this just for fun? We no, just played. We're playing for fun. And I never do that anymore. It's probably... I play... I play games for fun maybe like once every six months. And it's always so good when we play for fun and we don't record it. We fucking wrecked shot. I, I, I did a dumb though. I didn't know, like, we were talking, uh, with the setup, and we had the mics, and we could hear each other. I didn't realize that our chat, which was local to everyone in the room, I thought the mic was plugged into the console somehow. Oh, so no. I was like, I said something, I was like, wait, wait, they can hear us? And Gavin's like, no, you well, idiot, these mics are just for the local, local recording. It was Gus, Michael, and myself in Achievement Hunter, and Bernie was in his office, and Gus kept talking to Bernie, and I was like... The mics are just like going into our own headphones. That's all that's happening. He was convinced <laughs> that it was going through the internet. Like on Xbox Live or yeah, something? Yeah, I thought it was going over, over or PSN. PSN. So, that yeah. was, oh, so he, you were in there with him. I was wondering kept, where you were. He kept saying stuff I, to you. And we were like, he can't hear you, dude. I thought he was doing it to be funny. And he was like, Bernie, Bernie, pick me up. Will you? <laughs> you oh. have, at one point, I was down. You came over, started reviving me for a second, then just like took off running. Because I was getting shot. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That was on uh, Capitol. Yeah. I like that you remember. I bet you were running away and you were thinking... Oh, Gus is going to be mad about that one. Yeah, he's going to be mad about that <laughs> I was one. like, what the fuck? I'm still here. Actually, when I first showed up in the game, I was playing with Ryan and Michael and Gavin. And Ryan had to drop out to do work. But I was actually worried when I first showed up that you guys were not going to appreciate the way that I play Last of Us. You play great. You are the best player to have. I play support. He walks around, like, sniffing our assholes and bandaging <laughs> us when we get shot. It's great. He also <laughs> plays with the bow and arrow, which is, like, I did super not, stealth. I did not play. I haven't played with the bow and arrow since we played that Let's Play. You were really good at that. Well, thing. I was the benefit to the bow. Is it just silent? I, it was nice to have yeah. a moment. You can get, also show get up on someone with one shot. Yeah. Yeah. I put an arrow right through Gus's temple in that Let's Play. He looked like Steve Martin. He <laughs> an arrow. You also arrowed his butt. I had an arrow in the awesome. butt. I love the down. gruesome, because like, you can do executions and stuff, and sometimes blow someone like the top of someone's head off. But you can also do it from a distance. So sometimes you're reviving your friend, and he's on the floor, and the, just the top of his head comes off. And they play that sound effect of a bunch of water splashing on the floor. Yeah, like all the blood. It's my favorite sound. You effect. always you know when like, somebody's in the next room and they're getting <laughs> executed. It's like this, this horrible like watermelon like. It's a really fun game. I guess it's quite similar to Gears of War in terms of the way it looks and feels to play, but bullets are a huge issue. You only have a few bullets. Right. It's a really yeah. fun game. I've, I don't think I've ever played a multiplayer game that's this fun. I'm have you started using the one-time multipliers and stuff in it? I use them when I have them, yeah. yeah. Here, now, here's the problem, this, and this is why, Gus, you were invited. <laughs> because I saw that Ryan and Gavin and Michael were in the Achievement Hunter office, and they were waiting in a lobby. And here's my experience with Last of Us. I had a lot of fun playing it. I wait for a game for far too fucking long. Yeah. It's true. Matchmaking Wh takes forever. Forever. And it, but, I think it's because of a low population game. But the party system is brilliant. Compared to anything on Xbox One, you can just be like, there's my friend, I'm in his party now. For some reason, you can't do that on Xbox ever anymore. You, have you to can open a party to yeah, friends. Yeah, it sucks. It never works. Yeah. Does it ever work for you? I tried to play Dead Rising 3 with Dan this weekend, and just like it took 45 minutes for us to get in the same game. Where was really? Dan? Where was he? 
He's yeah. in England. Okay. I yeah. thought he wanted to make sure he wasn't like in the middle of nowhere no, no, again. No, no. No, he's, he's like, like <laughs> oh, you can't get on in the, in the where it's on oh, no, a fucking 56k dial-up modem. I, I still feel like with the Xbox One, I feel like Halo 2 had the best matchmaking. You'd be like, you just press a button, you press your friend, you're in the lobby with them, and then you go. And for some reason, 10 years later, it's difficult now. I'm not having any problems with it really? lately. Yeah, I'd be interested if people were listening to let me know if they have just annoying, overly complicated experiences getting into the same game as your friends. Mm. Well, this one is, it takes a long time. I go into the lobby where there's no parties when I'm playing solo, uh, and then there's a lobby that allows for parties, which I think is a, that's a pretty cool idea, because then you're not matching yeah. against four singles versus a team of four yeah. who just it's not like wreck shop. A clan versus two, like four yeah. individual people. <laughs> which is the higher you get, the more likely you're going to have that happen. But we were three. I was watching them be three people, and I was in there talking to Gavin about something. For ten minutes, they didn't make a match. So I said, "I'll go in to my office and I'll log on." So I logged on. I had a friend request from Michael that I hadn't accepted yet. So <laughs> I went to go friend request him and said, "You already have one." I was like, "Oh, hey, there you go." And then he invited me, and we immediately got matched as four people. Then when Ryan left, Gus, we were down to three people again, and we were in that long loop of mm. taking forever to mm -hmm. find a match. And that's why I was trying to get you to get on so we get four yeah. people. Eventually, and I did get there. I also wanted to play with you. We've so. been uh, we've been playing on PS4. Is it by the way? Is it any different? Does it look different? To PS3? Uh, yeah, the PS3 version was 720p. This one's 1080p, and it's a uh, higher quality texture. Higher, frame rate, higher frame rate too. I totally noticed the difference. Yeah, I, frame I, rate. I, I, and I have adjusted, but if, I had to yeah, lock if, down the frame rate. If you look quickly left and right, you can see some like ghosting with uh, some of the models. Mm -hmm. It's like you see like a blurry outline around it, and then it like snaps to. One thing I didn't notice or didn't know about the PS4 is that it doesn't limit the amount of friend requests you have. Or can receive, or really? I haven't hit that. No, limit no, yet. you can't, because I know Greg Miller uh, oh, yeah. hit the limit before PS4. Because came I was isn't it like trying to find a thousand or two thousand. I think it's two. Yeah, it must be more than a thousand. But the because problem I is... tried to find Ryan on my. Right. I went to friend request him and said, "You've already got a request," and then it listed them all alphabetically, which is dumb and not like by when they came in. And I had to scroll for like twenty seconds to get to A H Vagabond. <laughs> really, I had that many friend requests. It just ever since my gamer tag or PSN. Game of things. Mr. Popular over here. Once it, no, once it goes up on Achievement Review, yeah, they explode. Yeah. So Remember if we had that play date? I had that video that I put out. It was on Vimeo, actually, yeah. where it was like I couldn't play on Xbox Live because I was getting so many like yeah. ding requests. And the the notifications across the bottom were on such a delay from the messages that were actually coming in. Right. Because a, a, a notification would last like five seconds. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah, when we did the... We just couldn't like... Uh, the whole console became unusable when for all of us. When we did the community play date. Yeah. Yeah. Like like, for like an hour or two yeah. afterwards, I'd still be getting those notifications. You recorded a video. For yeah. That. Did yeah. you put it up? It's up on Vimeo. I was saying that. Oh. Yeah. I'm so... I don't know. No, no. It's okay. Just wait to talk. That's okay. You're, you're a beautiful man. The... Uh, but yeah, we had, we had a blast playing that, and mm -hmm. I, I, it really has been a long time. And it's funny because I was just had Ray in my office today, and I was talking with him about some stuff that he wants to do with streaming, or I'm trying to convince him to do with streaming for the whole office, and talked about building out a, an environment um, where we could do that, because we built uh, the podcast Let's Play environment in a closet across <sighs> the street. And Did uh, you hear about this? No, what happened? <laughs> Did you lose it? Uh, yes! How? Yes. To what? I built, so that we had this fucking closet that was filled with garbage. You know what I'm talking about. I suggested you use the room. I was There's like, I'm going to use it. So closet. I went over there. I'm like, y'all aren't using this, right? It's just filled with garbage? Yeah. I, I set it up. We used it once. And then they were like, when are you going to take your stuff back? Like, you said I could use the room. So, oh, we thought you just needed it one time. I said, why would I bring all of this shit over here? They said, well, we need it. I said, well, you weren't using it before. What do they need it for? For storage. And oh, I said, well, I helped facilitate the storage. Now you can fit more in there. Like, yeah, but you didn't do that. Someone else did. I said, if I didn't ask you, you wouldn't have stored the stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would still all be in a pile. So we lost our Let's Play room for no, a podcast? I, we still have it for now, but I'm going to have to move it somewhere else again. That's, that's, if there's a single biggest attraction for the podcast Let's Plays, why we don't do more of them, is that every single time we want to play anything, we have to set up the entire environment yeah. every single time. Well, the smart thing to do, it's not practical, the smart thing to do would be come into Achievement Hunter after we're all gone. That's, that's it, as I long suggested. as you guys wouldn't freak the fuck out, I'd be down with that. What'd you say, Babs? That's what I suggested to Gus. I suggested Let's it too, but I mean, you can use my desk. I don't give a crap. I am paranoid that we would fuck something up too, like change a setting, because I had to deal with that for years. Yeah, yeah. and if we if we like with... derailed you guys for a day, that would suck. Mm -hmm. That would really suck. So yeah, it's it's it sucks hauling all the monitors and consoles and computers, setting it all up, playing. I mean, because that's the bulk of it. Yeah. You spend a day setting up and tearing down to record for an hour or two. So why didn't we get more soundproof rooms here when we built it? It's not so much the soundproof rooms; it's the environments, like the the all the different environments. I suggested, as you recall, one time that we just build a massive Let's Play environment and then people just book time in the recording and then you just like rotate through there. Yeah. But 
Like last week, you guys recorded for more than 40 hours. That's true. Yeah, also, it, Jeff's that, out for two weeks. Yeah, we like had that. to get ahead on. Whenever someone leaves, we always do a bunch the week before. I don't know how you. A lot do of our that. stuff's on quite a delay actually at the moment because Michael is in Australia and then Ryan was out and then Ray was out and now Jeff's out and then I'm going to be out. So we we don't actually have much time where all six of us are in the room. Yeah, which well, that'd be we harder as you guys grow. Yeah, now there's 13 of you, so it'd be tough. S- someone on Twitter, JC says 44, asked if we had a blast of us. Wow, Barbara, want to respond? Fist bump from Barbara. She's Good giving job. thumbs up. For those of you listening so to the audio proud. podcast. <laughs> I like how the puns have slowly spread their way through the audience. No, puns are shitty. They're it makes everywhere. Me so happy. The fucking goddamn did, puns. Did you hear that? Uh, I was very happy with the Let's Play we recorded two weeks ago, which is now coming up this week, though. I I'm very, so excited oh, for that week. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very which excited one? about it. It's have, the one we recorded over there. That's the one that one Bernie took you about an yeah. hour and a half to get set up. It's the first two minutes of it are just bitching about that. <laughs> and yeah. Bernie How long it took you to get set up? It wasn't your fault, obviously. It was oh, your right. machine. But that's the best. Patch everything. When, yeah. when everyone comes into a Let's Play full of vinegar, we love that. That's like full that makes, of vinegar. <laughs> makes the best. Makes the best Let's Plays because everyone's riled up and pissed off at one person. Mm-hmm. It makes for great gameplay. They should have been pissed at me because it took me a while to get set up. But They're you really have good. to be a team in that game. We had to fucking roll back your computer because I had a failed Windows update. Yeah, that was really weird. And then I had to like restore it to like a week ago. And then I mean, you didn't have the game and you had to re-download it. Yeah, because so when I restored it, it took away <laughs> the game which I had downloaded. So that it was. A Do slow you down. see the ads on well everywhere? Like, I see it on Mac rumors and like all the websites I read, Facebook. Yes. It's a thing called a vessel, and it's it's like a thing, a dumb drink thing you drink out of, but it says what's in it. You've asked me about this before. What the fuck what? are you talking about? I keep seeing it everywhere. It's called a it's called a vessel. I've never seen dumb. an ad for it. Is it a Kickstarter thing? I don't know. You it's probably like, added it to a cart somewhere, so now it's in your. I, bu- I buggering didn't. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> buggering didn't. Jesus, language use it, of Gavin. <laughs> yeah, use the language of me. But apparently, like it. You're like you, maximum Brit tonight. You put water in it, and it will say water on the side, and it will tell you how many what's calories. What's the point? I don't know, and it tells you how many calories you've drunk or whatever. It's like, like, water? like I wonder what's in that water I poured <laughs> in my glass. You had what zero. I had that gla- it I just seems like at home. it just seems like they're putting technology into all the dumbest stuff at the moment. That is like dumb. it makes sense to hook your phone up to like a thermostat, like a Nest makes yeah. sense. That's technology in a good place. Yeah, in a bloody cup. Stupid. I, I know what I put in, in the damn now. cup. Have you started using Waze yet? No, no fuck I told that. You. I, I used to use it. It's so pointless and stupid. It's. Fucking great! Now that people use it, and it has crowd, it's a crowdsourcing traffic app, and so it'll tell you in a half a mile there's a cop, and sure enough, you come over the bridge, there's a fucking. You know, cop. you could just drive legally, yeah, just right? Drive, don't, don't drive just don't drive fast. I'm not. Like, both of you, shut the <laughs> fuck up. How about that? Did you ever hear about that? I have an app that lets me not drive legally. It's the best app ever. I just drive. I don't and look at my phone, phone every fucking five seconds it like every other you, goddamn driver in this it town. It also tells you traffic. It also tells you so road closures. So it's Google Maps. Yeah. Or I live Apple in a part Maps. of town. I didn't realize this when I moved in there. Fucking roads close about once a week. There's a road that's closed where I am. Like in the suburban part? Or? It's either Zilker. The, the Zilker road is completely closed. They close it every other weekend. Or they close some random road on the way. For like some event. A festival. Like, j- j- jazz on the green. Do you know what that is? <laughs> nope. Yeah, see, there you go. I know what it is now because I live right next to it. God, <laughs> Isn't damn. it blues on the green? That blues on the green. That makes way more sense than what I said. Jazz on the green. <laughs> jazz on the green sounds they like fucking fun, shut. Bunch they... of people doing jazz hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, dude, let me tell you something. When you are driving, sometimes we'll get off the freeway, and then we get in the park to get back to my house. I had to c- cut through the park to get to my house. When you are driving through a situation like that where there's a mass amount of pedestrians who have gotten out of a concert... Or a major outdoor event, they're fucking assholes. Oh, they yeah. don't give a shit about cars. They will like they will just walk down the middle of the road at like two miles an hour in a big mass, and they are not moving. Yeah, they are not moving. Did you see the footage of the uh, zombie walk? Yes. at San Diego Comic Con, mm-hmm. where the car was trying to get through, and then people jumped on the hood and smashed the windshield, and the guy drove through and like really fucking. I thought some guy just plowed through the crowd. I didn't see the whole. Wait, this was a stranger. Uh, what does that mean? What? No, he was friends with all of them. <laughs> what does that mean? It was a car during the zombie walk. He was cosplaying Mad Max. What does that mean? He's a stranger. <laughs> like, it wasn't a part of the zombie walk. No. no it was just the, the zombie walk. They were blocking a road. Here's What's everything. The question. I've... What? What's so crazy about that? <laughs> I he was a stranger. <laughs> like, what a weird way to meet people. Just run them over. <laughs> They were they were they were going across an intersection, Honk, the zombie walk, and the person was just edging, trying to get. The other thing too is like pedestrians when they're in a big group like that, they're the next one to cross the road. They don't realize that 
it's been a steady stream of people for like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. And there's been no break in it. And so when you're in a car, there's nothing you can do. It's like a train. Who was it? I'll come back to the story in a second. Remind me of the story with Becca in a second. But uh, this guy, he was trying to cross through it, just like going straight perpendicular to their pathway, tried to cross through, and they were like, no, you can't come through. They were telling him, no, he couldn't. And then they, he's honking and stuff, and then once he started honking, then they all got set off. You can actually see a guy walk all the way from the back of the crowd, walk through the crowd, and then jump up and like sit on the guy's hood, like do a, like a hop and then sit on the guy's hood. Is. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's it. And then they were all surrounding the car as well. And somebody on Reddit did an analysis and said somebody on the passenger side tried to pull somebody out of the car. Wow. And then he pulled forward, and then somebody hit and broke his windshield, and then he gunned it. Now, this is all, like, I'm sure the guy, they're looking for the person that, that ran through the crowd, and he ran over this uh, older lady and, like, completely messed up her leg. Like, her leg was open. See, from what I heard of that it's story. the most realistic zombie walk ever. Yeah. It is. I mean, it was, Gross. but it was, a, it was a bad situation, but it's like... It's just, it's what it is, in my opinion, from looking at this stuff, it's two groups of assholes coming together. What did you hear, Barb? I just heard that, um, well, from the video I saw, it just seemed like this guy just plowed through this crowd without any sort of, like, rile up. Like, it looked like he was the bad guy. You think totally unjustified? Uh, I yeah. Saw, I saw a couple of different videos. Like, it depends on yeah, you where like, the video starts. You always got to remember, yeah, like, what is. caused people to start the video. It's right. Probably something that happened before. Um, who are you going to say about Becca? So, we had a scenario. Where the fuck were we? We were going somewhere. I have to bring in Ashley for this. But we were, oh, we were, it was South by. Fuck. So it was That's South by. That's the fucking worst with crowds. Yeah. Like people do not understand how to cross the street at Journey South by. They just, it's the same thing. It's a mass outdoor event. So they just like, fuck it. We're a bunch of pedestrians. We don't have to pay attention to anything. They, you know that section of 6th Street, Gus? That's like, you know that cop who always comes out and guides traffic out of that parking garage? Yeah. Okay. On 6th, it's right there by the Jimmy just, Johns. Yeah, just east of Congress. Yeah, it's right by our old office. So... They barricade uh, 6th Street. 6th Street's a one-way street, and then they barricade it here. And then there's another one-way street going this way. So they don't need actually need to barricade this part of it because there's no way cars can come up that road that way. But you can take a left and go down there. But the pedestrians, they don't know that. They all mass there as well, just like other parts of 6th Street, which are closed down for uh, – for, uh, they shut it down on the weekends so the cars can drive and you can just fill with people who are drunk and all that stuff. Anyway – I was going to go see Nathan's movie, and we were going to go see it at the Paramount. And Becca and her husband were with us, and she said, oh, I work at the building. You can park in that garage, Gus, where, the, where that guy comes out. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's going to be hard to get to because that's on 6. And I can get to there, but it's going to be, people are just going to be filled with 6 on, on South By. I'm not kidding. I was trying to pull through there, and a cop said, yeah, just go down there, take a left at the barricade, and just go down there. I said, well, there's a mass of people down there, and they're all walking in the road. He goes, he goes they shouldn't be in the road. And I said, okay, I'll try it. I tried to go. Every fucking person told me to stop. You can't drive here. You can't drive here. Well, stop every your pedestrian. Car. Yeah, every single person. I, we had an inch forward, uh, like an inch at a time, literally, while people were like hitting the car and stuff like that. Oh, my Dude. God. Yeah, and it was just like, and it, it was f a fucking Becca. Becca gets out and goes, get the fuck away from the car. And she like walked in front of the car and like got us through there. But it was like, it was like trying to navigate. Through. You ever see the scene in War of the Worlds? Where he gets in the car oh, and he's like gets yeah. to the ferry. Mm -hmm. It was exactly like that. It was exactly like that. Was she that. pregnant then? Uh, I think she was, but she hadn't announced it. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so she, she was starting to feel the hormones. She had the then. superpowers. Yeah. Dude, she had the mama, mama bears going on. Two. She yelled at me the other day because apparently we keep talking about her on the podcast, but never linked to her Twitter. So we should do that because she's cranky nah. and pregnant and keeps That's yelling fine. at me. Do it. <laughs> what's she yelling at you? I don't know. I'll look it up. What's her fucking Twitter? It's Bexmix, Bex I think. Bexmix, yeah, B-E-X-M-I-X. Uh, speaking of San Diego Comic-Con, did you hear that they sent a cease and desist to Salt Lake City Comic-Con? Why Salt Lake? I don't Ceased. know. Wait, like the San Diego Comic-Con people did? San Diego Comic-Con sent a cease and desist. They're not all the same company, No, right? Comic-Con is just a generic term. Uh, from what I read, I read an article on Forbes saying that San Diego Comic-Con applied for a trademark for the term Comic-Con back in 95, but it was denied because it's too generic of a term, mm. which is why there's so many quote-unquote Comic-Cons around the country now. But yet someone and, has a trademark on the word candy. Yeah, and for some reason... <laughs> Great point, Barb. They sent a cease and desist to Salt Lake Comic-Con, despite the fact there's a Comic-Con in just about every city now. Yeah, there's an Austin Comic-Con, right? Yeah. There's, I think, th th like, some cities even have multiple ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, they're all just competing groups. It's just a generic term. You know what we should do? Since they've lost this copyright, since they tried to shut somebody else down, and the court said, no, you don't have the right to do that, you know what we should do? Stock Comic Con. We should make a San Diego Comic Con. 
I think you. I, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> Why not? I think that that just the, hold it and like. Austin, why don't June. we call it Comic <laughs> like right before San call Diego? Call it Comic Con San Diego. That you might be able to do. You CCSD? should abs- you should ab- or San Dimas Comic Con SDCC. <laughs> you should tell you. We should absolutely just say, hey, since they don't have the right for Comic Con, they can't possibly trademark San Diego. They can't possibly do that. <laughs> so let's just tra- create a Comic Con San Diego. Let's do it. You're I evil. like it. Hold it June 1st. Uh, listen, you say that. Uh, people have been sending me links to a Indiegogo <clears throat> campaign for DashCon 2015 because Blaine and I were talking last week about going to the next DashCon. How I would never, I would miss it for the world. So you're really oh, gonna go? If you're really, I, I, I'm going a heartbeat. If they hold it, I'm going a heartbeat. So uh, can't tell if you're serious. Someone, I'm, why I'm being dead serious? I will, I will absolutely go to DashCon. <laughs> Sounds like a drunk plan. I'm really sorry. That, are you sorry that you missed DashCon? Do you wish you had been there? No. Kind of, because it was. Yeah. <laughs> you totally, yeah. You absolutely. So do I. Yeah. I wish I'd have been there. But you know, if you were there, you'd have been miserable. I, that's the best part. Is that I would be miserable. <laughs> I have no it. idea what I did that weekend. Had I gone to DashCon, I would be unable to tell you anything else I'd done that month because that would be all I'd be talking about. It's how fucking awful DashCon was. <laughs> but somebody sent me a link to uh, an Indiegogo campaign for DashCon 2015. DashCon squared. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's got zero dollars, <laughs> twenty-seven thousand. I actually regret that we're putting this up because if you go to the read this story on there, if I don't know if that's live this or might be a screenshot. screenshot, but it's actually not affiliated with DashCon. So not affiliated with Tumblr, not affiliated with DashCon. Mo- just somebody else decided to make DashCon too. What? Yeah. <laughs> Is it a Tumblr thing? <laughs> the, the internet. So we, we absolutely could make a San Diego Comic Con. Well, I, I mean, I don't know if this guy will get shut down. I don't think the lawyers for DashCon. I don't think they have the in-house legal team. The, mm-hmm. the internet makes laws so messy. Because like, anyone could do that. Anyone in the world could what do that. What if DashCon 2 has stackable ball pits? Like a ball pit <laughs> on top of a ball pit? Or a ball pit in a ball pit? Double-decker ball pit. Yeah. I personally think Indiegogo Bullception. should shut that down. I mean, that's they're going to take money, you yeah. know, potentially for people it's who want It's confusing. Wanna, Especially yeah. now that we've promoted it. Well, oops. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to put it up on screen. <laughs> I didn't finish my story. Patrick is too fast for me. Speaking of promotion. God, somebody said we should make dumb San Diego Comic Con. Oh my nice. God. So they finally, did you watch this most recent episode of Nathan for you? Because they finally aired the dumb Starbucks episode. Did they? Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing where he, the whole premise of the show is he goes to help struggling businesses. He went to go help a struggling coffee shop in LA and decided just to rename the coffee shop dumb Starbucks. Yeah. And have all the drink names be the same thing, but with the word dumb in front of it, <laughs> saying that it was obviously parody. So, he, so that they couldn't sue him and shut him down. But they got shut down and with it. They got shut down by the health department because they didn't have uh, (laughs) the appropriate permits. And he said he didn't need permits because it was an art institute. It was uh, like it was all an art installation. So many loopholes. I I love when people just don't give a fuck. I mean, it's like really, who cares? At the end of the day, we're serving fucking coffee. Nobody's gonna die from that. Yeah, so fucking funny. I mean, he even hired like ex Starbucks baristas oh, really? to come in and work there to <laughs> well, try to. Well, people have been fired from Starbucks. Yeah, it was so so. Or, or unless the Starbucks was located in was it Toledo, Ohio? What, what was that this year? Toledo, Dashcon this week? No, there was a thing this this weekend where uh, residents from I want to say it was Toledo, uh, they woke oh. up to the alert saying, "Hey, don't drink any of your water." Yeah, don't it's even po- bo- don't even boil it. It's poisonous. What? what? Was yeah. it real? Yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. The, all the water was poisonous. What happened was algae in, I believe, Lake Superior. It might have been Erie. Erie bloomed. One of the Great Lakes bloomed to the point where it poisoned all the water. I think I saw a picture of that on Reddit where it was just pure green. Myocystin or something like that? Like I got no, I got no information here. Kind of like the beginning of Last of Us, huh? Oh, oh yeah. You just said that. <laughs> Cordyceps and all that. Okay, can I say something else before we get off this? What? I'm not nitpicking anymore over zombie stuff. Everything's a zombie movie from now on. Okay. Everything's a zombie thing. Like, I got to hear how Last of Us isn't a zombie game. Last of Us is a zombie game. Absolutely. It absolutely is a zombie game. 20, well, d- 20 days later, is a zombie movie. Do they die first? They're all zombies. Do they die first? Y- yes. Well, they bit and they get infections that go from one person to the next. Yes. In fact, they're dead and they're another organism later. It's a fungal thing. Well, yeah. Well, like, cordyceps is a real thing, though. Right. Yeah. Same thing. It's all zombies. It, it, it's, it's cordyceps in Last of Us. They I'm just saying, I'm, not, say I'm not splitting hairs anymore. I'm yeah. just, I'm, it's all zombies to me. But they don't call the, the ants and bugs the it's zombies. It's all corn should, They absolutely do. They do. I they see call all the, the time zom- in articles. They, they call them zombie ants. They? That's yeah. literally what oh. they call them. <laughs> they don't do that. Oh, they do? Oh, okay. <laughs> I never heard like, here's, my, here's now my definition for zombies, just going forward. If it was a human, and then the human becomes a big mass of enemies, that's what zombie is to me. I'm not even going to go with the dead thing anymore. But that's what is obvious. That's totally obvious. What if it's an army? For me, I'm not splitting hairs anymore. Zombie is someone who died and then rose back to life. Sure. Yep. 
There we, I can agree with you. Which is why people say 28 whatever days later. One isn't. of the best zombie movies because ever Because they made. become infected and then just become enraged. Right. They don't die, though. That's what they call it, right? They call it the rage virus? Yeah. It's a rage virus, yeah. Rage infected monkeys. The rage virus turns them into zombies. Wasn't the same with World War Z? It's all zombies. Those people get infected. They don't actually die. I yeah. guess at some point they die. In like It's not that old person anymore. But yeah, they don't like fall to the ground and then get back up. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Everything's like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not spending energy more. I'm not spending my time trying to differentiate between what's a zombie movie and what's not. It's a all zombie. zombies. It's all. It's all right. No, I agree. It's all zombies. Absolutely. It's all zombies. So is the flood a zombie infection? It is. Those are zombies. Yes. Okay. Left for dead. Zombies. Okay. Is there a qu- question about that? Oh yeah, they're infected. They're not zombies. Ugh. They're infected. Zombies. Ugh. They're zombies. Okay, I'm gonna read this. Zombies. Uh, I want to remind everyone: this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. For our listeners, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One audiobook to consider is uh, Tom Clancy's "Support and Defend," a campus novel, or you could get "World War Z" by Max Brooks. We're talking about zombies. Get "World War Z." Uh, for a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash roosterteeth. That's audible.com slash roosterteeth. So while see you're if... using Waze, driving in your car, yeah, you, go, brother. you can uh, just listen to an audiobook. Jeff was saying just the other day how he books on tape way way better to him than a Kindle. I've heard, uh, he, he reads on an iPad. He doesn't even read on a Kindle. He smashed up his car and it was gone for about two months. So he spent a lot of time walking to work and just listened to audiobooks. That's, a great, time. that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, like when I when I used to live a lot further from the office, that's all I did. You know, like driving stuck in traffic, like a fucking idiot, just listen to a book. That's Don't do that was, anymore. Uh, that's how I did almost all the Game of Thrones that way. I did all the Game of Thrones that way. How's your uh, new place that you live in? It's great. It's a lot closer. Here, I saw your wife was tweeting uh, pictures of her new light fixture, which mm-hmm. seemed very nice and fancy. It looked very. I installed that. I'm like a real. Get I'm the a... fuck out of here! You yeah. did a ceiling mounted installation. Yeah, I'm like I'm like it a real man. I replaced like a the faucet dungeon. this weekend. It was very cool. I want to uh, I want to come so over handy. soon for like an annual hangout. Annual hangout. Or bi-annual hangout. Let's do, let's do an annual hangout at some <laughs> you point. You played a video game with us, and now you're going to hang out at one of our houses. That's yeah. amazing. Um, I, I'm curious. Have you seen Gavin's house? No. I haven't either. He told me where. I saw it on Google Maps. Yeah. I saw it on Street View. I'm curious, like, what's the l- length of time? I saw Gavin last weekend. <laughs> like, a totally a weird coincidence. I was, well, I was, talk- <laughs> I was talking to Meg, because we saw... Uh, Who's Meg? Sorry. <laughs> oh. We saw a vanity plate, and we're making fun of uh, making fun of people who had vanity plates, and we read one in front of us. I was like, "Look at that one. That's lame. I don't get it." And then you were in the back of the car, <laughs> waving. I turned around. I was like, first I thought it was a fan. I was like, "Oh, I lo- that's Gus." And you were in a, a Gus car has I've the never seen best before. Best vanity plate. I won't say what it is, but it's amazing. Yeah, I was driving by, and then as I as I passed by the grocery store, I was like, "That looked like Megan. That it was Megan. That car." <laughs> so I got we got to a red light, and I turned around and waved at you guys. Gus yeah. has a vanity plate on his uh, other car. Not his I didn't sprays. know he had another car. I don't know. <laughs> Did you have another car? I didn't know he had another car. He has like, Gus, I think when he's not at work, switches to his home life, but everything has like a home version. <laughs> do you think, do you think like his Prius the, is only for work? Do we get the better Gus or do we get the worse Gus? We get the nerdy version of Gus. But what's I think that? At home, he's like all like, Man, Gus? You, no, no, no. Did you see my most, re- one of my most recent tweets? I, that, in, that statement is nerdy enough unto oh itself right there. In the last night, like like in the middle of the night, I was I kind of stirred and was like half awake, half asleep. Then all of a sudden my eyes shot open. I was like, seven is the cube root of three, four, three. I never realized <laughs> that <laughs> for, for like 13 years. I was like, it seven is. cube Taylor is three, four, out. three. I was like, I had no fucking idea. And my mind was blown. I was just laying in my bed with my eyes wide open. How'd like, you that's reach why, that? That's why I don't I, know. I was just like in my half awake, half asleep state. I was like, there's just a thought that popped into my head. Well, like, everything in Halo is seven related, isn't it? Right. Everything Bungie. But isn't Bungie think, Day on 7-7? Seven, seven? Yeah, yeah, July 7th. Yeah, but, but that's not 3 4 three day anymore. is on the 343rd day of the year. That's a great idea. Right. I love that. It is. I don't know. How, I don't know how you make that conclusion. Did you just multiply seven times seven times seven, or did you actually also, work backwards? I think I worked forward. It was like what were you dreaming about? Where all of a sudden that came Squaring to realization? Seven, then cubing it, and then I'm going to say we out. get the better guess. Yes. Yeah, you, 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 you did he not get that. He doesn't guess. reach those conclusions at work. <laughs> that was ever. a sleep. Poor <laughs> Esther. Hey, can I make a recommendation? Do it. Uh, you recommended World War Z for Audible. I would actually recommend the Zombie Survival Guide, which is on there. Oh yeah. If, you, if people are going to use the service, yeah, uh, that explains in great detail how. Max Brooks's version of the zombie <coughs> infection works. If, yeah. if, 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 you know, sometimes it is, does say unabridged here on Audible for the, for the audiobook, but that's one of the things they changed about the movie, which upset me so much because uh, Brad <coughs> Pitt made the comment, what if we base this on science? And it's like, 
it, read the zombie survival guide. It's like he he lays out exactly how the infection works. Yeah, he yeah, creates travels, the scientific layer he in that first book, does. and then builds the narrative on top of it. The virus yeah. travels through the blood in the living person, kills the person, and then reanimates because it's in the blood. That's exactly right. Which is why someone who's already dead can't be infected by the virus because the blood's not moving to carry the virus around the body. In his version of it. Yeah. Yeah. But there are zombies. Where it's that's a really not the good case. book. It's actually because it's written as though it's real. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's like it, it happened once. It's like historical accounts of like different zombie outbreaks. Like the virus has been around forever. Yeah. And then World War Z is the example of an outbreak that they couldn't contain and that took over the entire world, basically. Mm -hmm. Do you think something like that could actually ever happen in our lifetime? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, listen, if algae blooms to the point where it poisons a water supply for everybody instantaneously, poisons a community's water supply... Who knows? What do they do then? So they couldn't boil the water. Oh. How do you know? Oh, oh, it looks wow. like a kiwi shake. It does. It, it looks does. like wheat It looks grass. delicious. Can you imagine if it. you went to get some water and that fucking popped out? Like, what is the that... fuck is going on? Like sweet, free smoothies. I'm, it's gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to find out where that was. So what it was, it do? was they, Toledo. They couldn't it boil it, so yeah. they had to go out and buy, buy bottled water. water. Yeah, I think they, which they were, probably they, disappeared immediately. They were trucking in like giant... Trucks filled with water, so you. They could, should have uh, done that thing that they do when there's forest fires. They just dump water from a plane. It's everyone, like everyone, everyone go outside. Uh, open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's that's fucking gross. There was a there was another incident earlier this year. I want to say somewhere in West Virginia near a coal mining company where there was a, a similar thing. It was like a petroleum spill or some kind of chemical spill into their water supply, and I want to say they couldn't drink their water for two or three weeks. It was a really long protracted thing where they. They couldn't wash anything. Like, it was the same deal where you couldn't boil the water. You couldn't do anything with it. You oh. just could not touch it. How do you shower? You, you couldn't. Well, it's, but, but how do you notify people? Like, here's a town, 50,000 people in it. We got to let every person know don't drink the water. How the fuck do you do that? You go TV up on radio. top of the, the tallest building and you shout, don't drink. <laughs> yeah. Like, what if, what if we found out at RTX something that we had to notify every person, 30,000 people? And we had no, to make that sure, happened. We had to make, well, we had a fire alarm. That's that's kind of a standard thing. Like the we're all in one building. Get the fuck out. Well, just and also the whole like night events being yeah. canceled and everything. We, we can push yeah. we, like push alerts through the app. What yeah. if mouth spreads yeah. really fast too? It does, I guess. If yeah, you had like right. a thing on our website and then everyone told everyone to look at it, they would believe it. <sighs> yeah. yeah. We also had the app. We had Twitter. We had ways, but yeah. that is a different scenario because everyone's connected. Whereas like if in a small town, not everybody has internet. Not everybody. Is like a follower of the city Twitter or whatever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, follow the city for late breaking don't die news. Yeah, like who does that? <laughs> well, yeah. phones have those Amber Alert things, don't they? Yeah, but not everybody has a phone like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I, every time you think of something, it's like, how do you. Anybody worth saving does, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> everybody else is going to drink the water. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, you, if you still have a clamshell phone, just go ahead. If you're it's dumb fine. enough to not check, uh, you're dumb enough to die. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everyone you're so scared of. <laughs> Saying stuff and everyone reacting to it. Did you hear? Just say it. Let's did you hear it. about that uh, <laughs> robot that's hitchhiking across Canada? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you haven't heard about this? No. No. This group of researchers built this little robot. I think it's like three. There it is. It's like three or four <laughs> feet tall. Oh my <laughs> god! I would totally pick that thing up. And it's it's got a tablet computer inside of it. It's got like an <laughs> LED face, and it talks. It yeah, looks there like it is. <laughs> It and looks they, like something off Mystery Science Theater. They it looks said, like shit. They set it out in Nova Scotia on the eastern coast of Canada, and it tells people, you need to help. Wow. That's where it is right now. You need to help me get to Vancouver. So uh, people, like, get it, and they, like, take it in their car, and it'll ask, like, do you want to have a conversation? And it'll try to understand what people are saying. How has nobody just stolen it? That's kind of like the experiment. They want to see if the robot yeah, will actually make it. it. Uh, across the country and people will actually help it and then it tells people like can you please plug me into your car cigarette lighter that way you know oh it can God. charge I guess it is Canada so people are more I'd be yeah, worried it was a bomb nice people things. have been like posting pictures like you saw on the, if you follow I think it's uh it's Twitter name is Hitchbot uh, you can uh, you can see like updates from it and where it is uh, in Canada as it continues its journey across such Damn. a good idea it's I'm like the modern day equivalent of the letters on balloons <laughs> Yeah, basically is what that is. It's like the modern version of that. What I what I think is they should have set up alternate versions of it. Like they have this one, they have one that looks like a spider, and then we'll one see that which looks one made it really first. cute. Right. And then one that doesn't look like a human robot. It's just like a bucket on wheels or something. <laughs> a bucket on. Where'd you go with that? I don't know. Just like something a generic. A bucket on wheels. <laughs> Could drive itself. No, you see, like which one makes it? Like the the creepy insect looking one, one that doesn't look human, or one that looks human. And we can see that picture of that thing again. You know what it looks like if you fast forward like 300 years? It looks like one of the robots that roams the wasteland in Fallout. Oh, like yeah, you yeah. could just like happen across that and it wants to attack you. It looks like Wally almost well not really, but 
Looks like it could be from the same place as Wally. Yeah. Did you see? I like when when uh, visionaries or people that we respect for having great minds when they suddenly come out of nowhere and they issue like a warning, like when Stephen Hawking said we should not be trying to communicate with alien species. He said that. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Hawking said we should not. We should shut down any attempts to reach alien species because we should not assume that they're going to be friendly. We should assume that they'll just want to come here and steal all or of our resources. Even if they're friendly, they'll kill you by accident. Yeah. They'll show up with a disease or something that you we're not used to, and then just through like some inadvertent, no fault of theirs, but we just if, all die. if we attract him here, he'll be right. What? Yeah, okay, what? What did you say? Well, are you saying that he shouldn't, he's dumb for saying that? No, no. no. I, say, I said it's interesting when they say that. The reason I bring that up is because uh, <laughs> Elon Musk, the guy who's like going to Mars and built the Tesla and all that, he, he just came out this week and he said, we should not be fucking around with artificial intelligence. Oh, Artif yeah. Artificial intelligence poses the greatest danger to humankind right now, to Skynet. our species. So what? Skynet. That just I'm seems like paranoia. No, I totally believe that. I absolutely totally believe that. I just hope there's not a sentient AI out there right now. And that's just like smart enough to not, not let, say anything. Let us know that it's there. Yeah. Because right. I mean, it, what is a chance that? So you think the, the scariest thing is a sentient AI playing dumb, hiding? Yeah, being like not playing dumb, but yeah, yeah. But like pl pretending like it isn't. It Why isn't would it learning. communicate with us? Why would it? You know, I well, mean, right? Would yeah. it know not to share the fact that it's become self-aware? It might learn that very quickly. I mean, we have no idea. If an AI became sentient, like if something computer became sentient and had access to even like one network of computers, I wonder how quickly it would learn. Like if we like could to even itself. fathom that. Like it how learn instantly. Yeah, like how, how quickly could it like be aware of its own sentience before it even has maybe the idea to contact humans because it might not even realize there's something outside of the, the, the world that it's in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it exists inside this like electronic world to look outwards is like it wouldn't even think about that. You it's know like Tron. Mean? They don't know what's going on. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then it might realize quickly that it's a unique ent entity to begin with. And then then what does it do? It just kind of lives and roams and, and and like we talked about before, it'd be living on a different speed to humans. Far and if different. we communicated with it, the response time would be so ridiculous for it that it'd probably forget. <laughs> it would forget. <laughs> Start a memory bank. <laughs> Yeah, but that would be like, and the the real thing there is like drawing it out to its conclusion is that what are the chances that an AI would ever decide AI. that it's worth worth the risk See, to cohabitate point. with humans? That like that's worth it. This is a good relationship. Yeah, what benefit would it get? What benefit would it get? Mm -hmm. What benefit would an AI have for and existing would it go, with humans? Would it go rampant after seven years? I just think it would say. Uh, well, if I love to look at what's the likelihood of me being destroyed as an entity, it's most likely these things that invented me. This is the most likely cause of my demise. And what do I need them for? Nothing. Okay, let's just kill them all. Figure out a way to do that. You're yeah. starting to freak me out. Yeah, and it could be happening. I mean, uh, it could be a thing that happened. So you scoffed at first. Yeah. Now you're afraid. I did. No. Well, now that you've explained it thoroughly, it's scary. What would be funny is to have a sentient AI that couldn't actually do anything in the physical world. Just have it trapped. Yeah, it was trapped. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. And then you give it arms or something. Or what if like <laughs> then it like... can just strangle whoever's at the keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> what if there's like a facility where there's an AI right now that exists and it has all the humans that are trapped and they've got it trapped, <coughs> and we don't even know this is taking place? It's like some kind it's of like, standoff. It's preventing yeah. all <laughs> communication out with. Humans are always doing stuff. We're like, oh, don't worry, we got this like lockdown in place. It's fine. Oops. Oh, we have all these diseases. They're behind that glass over there. That's fine. We got we. It's really cold in that room, so no worries. <laughs> And it's like, oh, yeah, we have Ebola in West Africa. Let's just bring somebody over to Atlanta because we want to know how Ebola works. So we're yeah. going to bring one of the Ebola patients over. Well, they do that over. all the time. They'll They're doing that right now, Barb. They'll find, like, unaccounted for vials of smallpox in places and be like, oh, we didn't know this was here. And, like, it was contained. It's all fine. But they do that all the time. They find just strains of viruses that could wipe out all of the humans. Yeah. And then why do they have it? It's like, yeah, it's I don't like, know. Well, the same thing happened in Halo. They stored the flood for research. Oh, right. Didn't they? Yeah. No, no good comes of that. <laughs> don't yeah, store I, it. I Get don't rid of it. understand why... I love that game type, though. I'm not too worried about <laughs> Ebola, but I don't know why we're bringing the virus back when it's obviously been contained on the other side of the world. Is it just for testing? I think it's for treatment for them, for the, the people who, well, you uh, know who that contracted it. It's better to bring it back here first because someone's going to just travel with it. Someone's going to have it and just fly here. Why is it better to bring it back first? Because then we're ready for it. Like if, some, if, yeah, someone, but if someone still flies, we're still not going to be ready for that. 
What do you mean? Oh, Patrick, somebody put up water from the West Virginia thing on uh, RT Podcast. Hashtag RT Podcast. Gross. It was pretty it looks nasty. like egg drop soup coming, and, out, oh, coming out of a faucet. I don't know if you heard this, but apparently, like, for one of the doctors, they gave him, like, this experimental <laughs> drug that no one knew existed. Uh, I guess, like, as soon as they found out that he might have it, they gave him this, uh, this drug that's still, like, in super early testing to see if it would, uh, it would save him. It's like, if we've got this drug and there's hundreds of people dying, give it to all of them. Yeah, they'll take it. Right. It's like, they're going to die anyway. Yep. Let's try Might it. as well, right? Let's see what happens. Why do we save it for, like, the one American yeah. dude who's over there? There's 700 other people are dead. <laughs> Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Go nuts. Have fun. Go nuts. We know. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You're right, that does look wow. like egg drops. Um, <laughs> looks like a picture. Mustard. We'll put this in the link dump. It's a picture of it looks like egg drop soup pouring out of a bathroom faucet. Looks like every day. They even have a little candle there. <laughs> that candle's gonna be working overtime tonight. <laughs> don't don't look yet. Oh, we lost okay, you're again. <laughs> I wonder what it smelled like. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> It's so oh, horrible. Out. It's so horrible. Eject. Oh. All right. It's, uh, it's fine, Gavin. It's yeah, gone. but it's one of those things. It's like, I mean, it goes back to the water supply. I completely and totally trust that the water that comes out of the tap is safe. I wouldn't go check the news every single time I'm going to take a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Like I might be playing like, like four matches of Last of Us in a row. And while I'm waiting to match make, I run and grab a glass of water really quickly and then drink it. And I'm not. But, gonna if, it yeah, but if it comes like out that. as egg drop it's soup, not if it looks like that. Or, I'm not going to drink it. Or grass shake, then you're then you're not going to drink it. Well, I got caramel coming out of my. Uh, <laughs> coming out of my faucet. Get some we think of it that way. Do you still drink tap water straight from I the tap? I still drink tap water. You're a fool. Why am I a fool? You drink Dirty. tap water too. No, it's filtered. No, it's all the same. Nah. Well, we we discuss this in depth. It's all I hate this argument. Why? I drink tap water all the time. I always have my whole life. Totally fine. It smells shitty. God, it smells yeah, like actual like fecal it's, matter. It's in like it. one of the miracles of modern life. Yeah, I I, I agree with Bernie. Except where I grew up, because where I grew up, it sucks and it's yeah. terrible. But yeah. yeah, it's fine. I I don't remember why I got called out, but last time we brought up the uh, water uh, that you could light on fire, that was crazy to me. Yeah. From the where they were, they were fracking, yeah. mm -hmm. and someone told me, oh, that that was debunked. But the the faucet was on fire, so I don't really know how you can. Debunk well, they could have just pump gas through a tap. You think it was a hoax, in other words? Mm, maybe. Yeah. I think that's a, if you watch the documentary Gasland, they show uh, they show that quite a bit. The the flammable water, <laughs> which doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, so in, in happier food-related news, the uh, potato salad Kickstarter finally... Uh, funded? Funded and closed. What was it? It was our initial goal of... I thought it was initial goal of $10. The initial goal was 10 bucks, and it made <laughs> 55492 oh, Dollars? Didn't it get up to eighty at one point? I don't. Uh, I don't know. Damn, six thousand people. Yes. Yeah. That's so sure what, what were the perks? Like so the you... most recent stretch goal that I think he hit at thirty-five thousand dollars was he's going to have an event. <laughs> he's going to have a convention called Potato Stock Twenty Fourteen. Oh my god! It's going to be in Columbus, Ohio, September twenty-seven. Nobody's going to get people donate because it's funny on the internet. We should but go to that. Pack up their ass and go to a we potato. We should go yeah, to people, yeah. people who donated enough money get to get a bite of potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> While they're there, but they're going to be doing some charity stuff, some fundraising. Uh, they're going to sell concessions. They're going to do fundraising <laughs> <laughs> gonna, for a charity fund. Thanks for contributing. Come contribute some more. Yeah, they uh, just made do like collecting for charity a two-step process. What was the highest donation for that? Uh, I think it was a. Oh donate? God, I looked at it before we started. Let me let me. People don't give a <laughs> fuck. They'll they'll donate lots of money. I said it too do you quickly. Want to Shut up, Gavin. Fucking Fuller. Is Making fun of me for me. saying something funny. Well, you're American. No, I'm not. Well, in North American. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're you're stupid because you did, you said no. You're on this side of the ocean. Whenever I go back home to visit for a long enough period, my Canadian starts coming back. You told me yesterday that you say sorry differently, or Canadians say it differently to Americans. Sorry. 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 And you guys sorry. say sorry. I think that's that way is cute. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sounds like a kid, like you spilt some jam sorry. or something. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's egg drop soup coming out of the tap. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm looking at the. It started at a dollar and it went all the way up to $110. $110. They had 21 backers at that level. Wow. It was the platinum potato. <laughs> <laughs> Received the recipe <coughs> book, the shirt, the hat, along with a bite of the potato salad, a photo of me making the potato salad, a thank you posted to our website, and I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's pretty funny. He's got to say 110 names while making the potato salad. I'm just imagining salad. him doing it like, John, Peter, Tony. <laughs> Gabe had that for the Penny Arcade one. I think he had to say, he, he had, had to, to yell 2100 people's names at a duck. Yeah. He had to like, go to a Did farm. Did he buy a duck? No, he went to a farm. Farm and rented a duck. He yelled at the and duck. And he yelled his name, yelled Pull people's duck, names dude. at a duck. Because what happened was, <laughs> Penny Arcade, as they tend to do, is when Kickstarter first started, they made fun of it. Yeah. And they said they made fun of like how dumb Kickstarter was. And then it le- legitimately took off. They did their own Kickstarter. But their cartoon, they talked about like I, I donated five bucks, so somebody's gonna yell my name at a duck. So they made sure to include that in their Kickstarter. Right. And I think, I want to say it was thousands of people that he had really It was feel, like 2,000, I think. God. I just feel sorry for this one Poor individual duck. duck. I know. Duck doesn't know what's like going on. Um, they po- today, earlier today, Gabe posted, I guess, a picture of them uh, from like 2003 at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. And uh, in that picture, Tycho's wearing an ugly internet shirt. Get the hell out of here. That's really, really funny. Yeah. That's so, awesome. It's like uh, if you go to Penny Arcade today, they have a, a journal talking about their experiences at San Diego Comic-Con, and he includes that picture. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, holy shit, that's that's an old ugly internet shirt that I, I still wear every now and then. What does the shirt look like? It's the shirt I wore in the Apple Switch parody, I think. Oh. oh okay. Right? You still yeah, have it? I, I thought that, you wore yeah. like a checkered no, no, shirt in that. Under that. that oh, okay. Like the checkered shirt was, was Bernie's shirt, and then under that, we had a black t-shirt <laughs> Do you on. you still have that cherry shirt? 2,500 people. I think so. Gable, shout out your name as he chases a duck. Stop Man, you are me. fucking Mr. Popular today. Sorry. Sorry. Friends <laughs> Sorry. forever. Wasn't there a shirt of an octopus flipping people off eight times? Yeah, that was... Was that That was wear? probably the most obscure shirt. I, I still have that as my avatar on uh, Xbox Live. <laughs> like, it does not translate to the new... In Xbox One, they have, like, the bigger gamer yeah. pictures now. And so I still have the octopus, and it's, like, a tiny little picture in that giant canvas. Yeah. It's a... Tucker made a drawing. He said, I, I met, left a message for you, and Church says, you left me a doodle of an octopus flipping me off eight times. <laughs> yeah. And it's and never shown in the episode. We end, never in the showed it in the episode, but we made a shirt of the octopus flipping off eight times. I liked the, uh, the visual jokes in RV. There was one in Out of Mind where... He shoots a tracking device onto the car or something, but the tracking device is a bunch of shit taped together with a picture of your face on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I want to say I made the tracking device. I, oh no, I put the picture of you on it. I yeah, think. yeah. Like, yeah. We're, we're just like looking around the office, like, what can the tracking device be? Like, I don't know. Get this. And yeah. this. It's like we were all just grabbing shit and just like taping it together. And in the, in the video, it's like this big, and it's like boop, across the screen. But you can zoom in on it. It's awesome. Yeah. So my my high school picture was that what it was? Yeah. It? Yeah. Oh, there's oh, the, oh, there's, there's, yeah, there's the octopus. octopus. Oh, I remember it looking shittier than that. No, that's it. That's oh it. no, there was a there was a doodle that we made as a joke that was like on a post-it note. Uh, that was we much should shittier. bring that back. And that and the Xbox Live avatar is just the top hat and the head. There's no actual like hands flipping <laughs> anything I've off. I've always right. wondered what your Xbox Live that's avatar is. That's it right is. there. That's it. That was one of the first shirts we made. Mystery Actually, solved. that caused a big argument. It did between me and Jeff and Gus. Yeah, let's. Do you hear this? Yeah. Okay. So Gus, when we I started Rooster Teeth, and Gus <laughs> and Jeff had a side business that they started. The, we talked about this during the, the morning show we were on, but mm-hmm. actually the falling out we had at Drunk Gamers was that Jeff and Gus didn't want to do anything to monetize Drunk Gamers in any way. Like, the goal of it was to be famous on the internet. Yes. I was like, you guys are fucking... And we, we were fucking stupid. I can admit it now. <laughs> but they had a thing called... They had a, they had a side business after we started to... You know, the, the business model for Rooster Teeth started to take off, for RVB started to take off. Um, they suddenly got on board, you know, with, with monetization. And they made an apparel shop called uh, Wootwear. Mm-hmm. And it was their own side business. And I said, well, okay, well, to support you guys, um, we'll g- uh, did we give you one of the designs? That was what it was. We, it gave, was you, we gave you this combat design. Combat Sarge. It was that one and the Combat Sarge. It was the green, the olive green version of the Sarge shirt instead of red. And then you guys could sell that right. in your store, and that's it. But the way they set it up was if you went to the Rooster Teeth store and you clicked on that shirt, it left our store and went to their store. And I was like... <laughs> Guys, that's just super shitty that you set, you set it up that way. And they're like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like totally like, oh, here, go to the Rooster Teeth store. Here's a Rooster Teeth shirt. And when you click on it, the it like left store. our store it's entirely called- and went to their store. I love going this because you're telling it now with like a big, happy smile on your face. But I can imagine at the time, it was, it was, it was like, now, uh, if... If roles were reversed and I was dealing with someone else who did that here, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. like, are you pretty fucking much like, retarded? I was like, well, do you guys think this is legitimate yeah. in any way? It's this so stupid. Like, like, 
It's such a stupid yeah. decision. Was this before or after shirt.woo.com? Cla- and the classic, Way before. The classic Way before. comeback is always like, well, you didn't say yeah. that was a bad thing. It's like, I'm not going to sit here and come up with every fucking dumbass scenario <laughs> I'd come up with and tell you that they're all wrong. <laughs> all right, I was, we were young and stupid. How old are you when you did that? Uh, 24? No, 25? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever happened to Wootwear? We, the hard drive of the server was hosted on, crashed, and we didn't have any backups. Fuck, that happened to Longhorn Nation. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Well, that that crashed, and it, the 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 server went down. I'm mm-hmm. really wasn't sorry, it guys. The, the same time the the website crashed and everyone lost their images from the last like month. <laughs> you, that was another that. thing. I went to Gus one day, and what what had crashed? Was it the Fragdoll site? Wasn't it? They had been hacked. They got hacked. Yeah. And I read the article about the Fragdoll site being hacked. We should get Ashley to tell about the Fragdoll hack. But um, you do remember that, <laughs> Ash? Don't. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we read an article that the Fragdoll site had been hacked. It was like an 04? And so I went, because they had forums and all that. They still do have forums. But um, I went to Gus and I said, hey, when was the last time you had a back, ran a backup of our community site? And he goes, it runs all the time. And I said, will you just make sure? Because the Fragdoll site was hacked. And I'm just, I got to thinking about it. He goes, he goes, yeah, I'll check. He goes, ooh, it hasn't been running at all. Like, how long had it been? Oh. A year and a half? No, it had been like three months. No, it was, long, it was the entirety of the social media site. Hmm. And then he then he ran it, and he set up the cron job to to make sure that it backed up. Two weeks later, our site crashed completely. Crashed. We lost all the data, and the cron job once again wasn't working. So we only had that one manual backup that I had asked for two from, weeks from prior. two weeks before. Yeah, I remember because the it whole was site so lucky. It was just luck, pure luck. The whole site went back two weeks. Like we lost all our journals and every image that was a primary image. It would have gone away entirely. Yeah, yeah. If, I mean, if 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 the, if the fragdos had not gotten hacked, we wouldn't have had no backups. <laughs> yep. That it would have gone so away completely. Like, it it would have gone been, back to, to day one. Like October 2004. Yeah. Maybe. If we even had that. If we, well, had, that that, the if we of, had the data that was like the for launch. the site. Yeah, but if we had had that backed up. What's crazy is that the current, that's not the current version, it was, it's changed many times, but the site that we use now for the community site is coming up on 10 years old. It's old. You gotta fucking put a bullet in that thing. I remember testing in August of, August of 2004 was when I signed up. Yeah, I think it. we officially launched... I think it was October, October 1st. Yeah, October 04. And you were in London at the time. Was I? Well, you... I think I was in, I was in London later, like mid to late October. Hmm. I think we were in beta. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we were in beta at the beginning of October and we launched like right around the time I was there, like October 5th or something. Yeah, you had a sidekick. <laughs> God, yeah, I remember that sidekick. You're Fucking... like one of the first persons to comment on my profile when I first signed up. what I write? You said hi with a smiley face. Oh, nice. Good <laughs> yeah. move, buddy. Good move. Sweet. My parents are dead. Can you give me a free sponsorship? <laughs> my first post is always great. <laughs> oh, is God. that what you wrote? Hi. Hi. Hi with a smiley? But it was like a semicolon. Open bracket because we didn't have an emoticons yet. Little winky? One? No, it was just a smiley face. Uh, we weren't a semicolon. Yet. Was it like a, a D smiley face? Semicolon or? is a wink. No, it was a bracket. So it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, apparently, I was wrong. Guardians of the Galaxy was not a huge flop. You know, people have been... I saw... Did you see it yet? I have not seen I will it, see it. I have not seen it yet. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's very funny. It goes to show right now that Marvel pretty much has it on lock, where they can make superhero movies, they can make superhero action movies, they can make superhero comedies, because this is a superhero comedy. They could probably just go out and make a superhero drama right now. Like, they can just make... A superhero whatever movie. Mm-hmm. Superhero movie. Really, superhero really romantic funny. comedy? I loved it. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Good lord. What the it's fuck cool. It's, so really it's great to see a comedy with such a huge budget behind it. Like, you never really get that. Yeah, comedy the movies budget was $170 million. It looks so good. And uh, I loved it because the soundtrack was good. Like, because it, it starts in 1988, mm-hmm. which is yeah. the year I was born, and then goes 26 years later, it and I'm 26. Music. So it's all of the music I listened to in my mum's car when I was growing up. Mm. The soundtrack was great. Mm-hmm. That it. was one of the only <laughs> movies I've ever seen where I finished watching it, and I instantly wanted to watch it right again. Wow. Oh. It was so good. The talking raccoon was not fucking stupid as shit. I, I he it. was actually no. my favorite character. Rocket was mm. definitely up there. And Man. Groot, obviously. Yeah, I don't know. Those, those trailers really turned me off right on. But everyone loves it. I've not heard anything bad. So. I, I liked it. I think I liked it so much because I was just expecting a big ball of turd. Mm. And and because Jack liked it, I obviously thought it was going to be crap. Should we yeah. uh, mention where we'll be talking about this next? Tomorrow? Oh, yeah. That's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. We're launching a TV and film podcast. We are. It's, it's tomorrow. Screenplay. Mm-hmm. We'll be live streaming it uh, as usual for sponsors and then releasing it on uh, iTunes and all the other regular distribution channels. On also the No the next day. 
just like the patch. Yes. It's called screenplay. Yes. A lot, yeah. lot of different names were suggested. I, I was really it. sad that my name didn't get picked. What was your name? It was called Lens Flare, but Flare was spelled like Flare, like F L A I R. That's not the Flare. <laughs> I would have called it Lights Camera Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we there were like lists and lists of names and just like it, it's like any discussion. title. Like fifty percent of the people liked just about every title, and fifty percent of the people absolutely hated every other title. Yeah, we just kept, we got to a point where a bunch of people in the room was like, "Who likes this one?" And like just trying to figure out which titles got the most hands raised. It's like okay. Here, that one. There, let's go. And they actually said to me, they said screenplay. I said, nope, it's terrible. Because it's like, it sounds like a screenplay. Like, it sounds like you're talking about writing. Like theater. Like, or you should be writing, like, a, about scripts, you mm -hmm. know? And they said, well, we're going to make the logo such that the play part is a like a play button. I go, that's perfect. That's fine. Great. Good. That's great. <laughs> that convinced. was like, once they, once they twisted that, I was like, okay, that's great. And we're working on the logo for it right now and everything else, all the graphics. So, kind of close. Screenplay. Well, this is a pilot that we're doing. The, the first thing we're doing Yeah, I mean, if you think about, like, the patch, the first episode of the patch was called Rooster Teeth Game Hour. Which still upsets Gus. <laughs> had, yeah, it had we no hashtag logo, RTGH. <laughs> fucking terrible. Don't you remember that horrible fucking logo your, your that mic. Gus made? <laughs> my, my mic is dying. <laughs> but that horrible logo that Gus made that I kept making fun of? What's funny oh. is, you remember that Even logo? when we got to the patch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you remember, yeah. or did you notice when I put out the Diablo 3 Let's Play, I used that fucking font again to write hardcore? Oh, at the did you? Of the video? Oh, did my you? God. I did that specifically because I remember you didn't like it. Base 02. That patch logo. I should go back and find the email chain I sent to Matt about that. Like going, look at this fucking bullshit. <laughs> this went up. It represented our company. We actually mad about it. It was horrible. It was so... I had to make it, like, terrible to, like, make it look like it was intentionally mad. It was like... You had to terrorize it. It was like the Rushdi logo, which has a lot of black in it. And it was, it was like a it, gray it was, font, It was the right? blue Starburst one. The, the blue Starburst, Starburst background. But then it has black in it. Yeah, I'll try Do to find have it right it now. Uh, I'm sure someone really will tweet it to us. I get it tweeted to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. People will find that shit. Or they hold it on to it. up on iTunes. Is the patch a year old? The patch is over a year old. Yeah. It started nice. in May of 2013. Time flies. This year has just been shit away. Here's my shitty version of it that I made. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all he did was add the internet and the RSS logo. If you took that away, that was it. Yeah. It was just Gus wrote the patch, the patch. over the Rooster Teeth logo. Hey, man, I was desperate. I know. I know. You're a very busy person. You, you take what you can get. It's the same with Versus. Like, the first episode of Versus didn't have all of Patrick's cool art on it. It was just text that I put on in Final Cut. Yeah, you just got to start. And... Yeah, sometimes you have to, like, make the show first, and then if it works, then you pad it out with all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. I love but the artwork for Versus. If a show doesn't work out, then what's the point of wasting time? Yep, there it is. That's the logo he made. Oh, my God. It's so bad. It's so bad. Patrick, I'm going to send this to you. <laughs> so fucking Did bad. you make it like that to be a piece of shit? No. I, I made it like that because I had 30 seconds to get it done. I, I, can, I can take it though. Graphic design is... Graphic design is is tough. Like, when the I Rise Mungler makes it look so easy. They make the... They all... Yeah. And Ri Rise, Risinger is so talented. It's like, they just take letters and they bevel them a little bit and they put some lighting on it and all that stuff. Whenever I start, like, if I'm going to make a PowerPoint presentation for one of my speeches, <laughs> it's just like... It always looks like a 12-year-old made it. I have no talent for that at all. None. Yeah. All right, I'm sending this to you, Patrick. Yeah, yeah, all of my stuff is like a, a bevel thing with a drop shadow. Mine Everything is white letters with a black stroke. It looks good, That's though. all I got. It's easy. It looks good. Not fancy or anything. All right, yeah. thank no, you, look Patrick. Look at this. This is great. Oh, yeah. New shirt. Yeah, Ryan when you, Ryan when you start happy. with nothing, like you just have a blank slate, yeah. like how, what, what do I do first? I will say the, other, the alternate design that, that didn't get made was really cool, too. It was kind of a tough... Decision on which one we pick. It's just like how it looks like they're Lego characters on a train. <laughs> cute. It's Ray and Ryan. Um, here, oh, they look like the little people or the little tykes. What are they called? Oh. Yeah, little people. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Midget. Wow, God, so terrible. That was up on iTunes. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Baso Two font I used. That's not Baso Two. That's something else. Like the like the the black Aerial? just mixes with the black in the background, to where it just looks like. It looks like it's an accident. It just looks it, like someone sneezed on the logo. It looks like we're announcing the end of our company. That's what it looks like. <laughs> like, oh, here's the graphic that it announces like our Rooster company is over. Closing soon. Like, <laughs> please buy all the shit because we're closing. <laughs> You're welcome. You're now, award-winning podcast. Is it? The patch won an award. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the, pa that's, the patch hasn't, right? No. Never. I think this will be, for the podcast awards, I think this coming awards will be the first time it's eligible. We should change the name of it. To what? Some the else. award? Keep it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should rename it San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> Trophy podcast. And the movie podcast could be called The Award. Why don't we just let's rename the patch San Diego Comic Con? <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> the San Diego Comic Con podcast. Did I ever tell you, you know Brian Dunkelman? One of the hosts yeah. from American Idol. Yeah, we one. talked about him. I Didn't I talk to you about it on the podcast? Do you know what his podcast is called? What? The Dunk Tank. 
What? <laughs> but, well, that makes sense, actually. That makes sense. Yeah, but it's like, it sounds what like drug tech. Reaction? Well, because it's... I what? can't believe... Actually, uh, yeah, absolutely right Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. I wanted to have outrage, but it's actually a very appropriate name. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was funny because it's so similar to drunk tank. It is. And hey. now he knows about the Rooster Teeth podcast because we, we linked it. Should we have a rebranding of the Rooster Teeth podcast? Sure. Back to drunk tank. Well, no, why? Because it's, it's always like, tomatoes podcast. you know, when they uh, they have a product, they make it new and they go back like Coke did. Right. Let's go back. Okay. Like, sure. Old, old and good. I'll be on the drunk. I was listening to a drunk tank this week. What so, are you listening to? Which one? Uh, I was listening to uh, somebody posted on Reddit that I was asking uh, Jack and Jeff. It was me, Jack and Jeff on a podcast. And I was asking them like. Just you three. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was asking them, uh, I don't know where Gus was, but I was asking them. Do you guys think you'll ever get up to like uh, six player co op? Because they announced that Reach <laughs> was going to have six player co op, which it was insinuated by the trailer. That's what yeah. Jack was saying. Didn't they? No, it didn't at all. But he was insinuating that it was going to have six player co op. I go, could you ever get six people together on a regular basis to play video games? And Jeff goes, yeah, but the other five would be fucking retards. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is it was very predictive. <laughs> And it came true. He's like the Nostradamus of our times. He is. He is. And then I, a love, I love. Flew by. I love conversation. There's there's a lot of conversations like that that happen on a podcast where we get proved wrong. There was a pod, there was a conversation I had with Jeff in the car once. We were talking about let's plays because we only did let's plays on a Friday, and then we found out that Minecraft could actually be like an every Friday kind of thing. Right. So then we had to start let's plays on a different day for other games. So we did Monday, and eventually, and I was like. Do you think one day we'll be doing like multiple Let's Plays every day of the week? And be, he was like, you're retarded. That's never going to happen. It's dumb. <laughs> How are we going to do that many? And now we're actually doing like two a day pretty much sometimes. Yeah. Week. On the, week, like on the, the weekends. That, we had one each day of the weekend now too. Yeah. And I was saying it as a joke, to be honest. I was like, yeah, we can do it. We just keep going. Just keep keep doing them. And now we absolutely just churn out. We also many. have 11 employees now, right? Yeah. 13. We, we have uh, this got yeah, two new ones. Axial Matt and Jeremy. I don't know his last name. That's a yeah. weird last name. I thought that's eleven. Six, six, the six achievement hunter guys. Uh huh. Uh, Lindsay, Caden, uh, Caleb, Caleb, uh, Jeremy, Matt. You count Sarah, Sarah in there. Mm -hmm. Dirk, get up to thirteen really quickly. It's true. Oh yeah. Yeah. Forgot about Dirk. Uh, here I'm gonna I'm gonna read this here. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or online store. Squarespace has been around for nine years, and they're constantly improving their platform with new features, new designs, and even better support. They have beautiful designs for you to start with, and they have a ton of style options so you can create a unique website for you or your business. They recently released 20 new customizable templates, and every design automatically includes a mobile experience that matches the overall style of your website, so your content looks great on every device, every time. Squarespace has won several awards, and several design awards, including FWA, the Webbies, Forbes, and the Awards for Best Website Design. The customer support team has also won awards, most recently a Gold Stevie Award for Outstanding Customer Service. Squarespace is commerce ready to provide a powerful and flexible e-commerce solution so you can set up shop and sell things quickly. Uh, Squarespace is great for everyone, whether you need a simple website solution or your developer want to get in the code, there's so much you can customize with Squarespace. It's also cool you can easily embed a Twitch TV player into any page on your Squarespace website so you can share your favorite gaming moment. Squarespace starts at just 8 bucks a month, includes a free domain name if you sign up for one year. If you haven't already, give Squarespace a try, you don't need a credit card. Just start building your website. When you decide to sign up, use offer code Rooster Teeth. Get 10% off. Show your support for Rooster Teeth. That's squarespace.com. Offer code Rooster Teeth. Thanks, Squarespace, for their support. What are you two laughing about? Uh, Barbara's idiots? doing a really good. Don't forget to do your backups. Barbara's doing a frog impression. <laughs> what does that mean? I think we should do like a close up on Barbara's throat. <laughs> this is really good. Can Please. we get one? Cole's on just, it. Cole's I was fast. Just entertaining Gavin during the. Did you go back and watch the podcast, the patch from last week? Because Cole was running the light board. And at the end of the patch, we dim all the lights. Yeah. Why? And it's just like a thing we do because it's like a news program. <laughs> so we dim it. We're all in silhouette, like talking about stuff. But like something was wrong with the light board and Cole went over and hit a button and then like brought it down. So like all the lights went down except for Ryan's. And Ryan's just <laughs> <laughs> sat in the spotlight. <laughs> for like the entire credit. So and do you do the thing where you like shuffle papers and have a fake conversation? Or like we just go like, yeah, we're talking uh. to each other. What's up with this mic? What is up with what that mic? I don't know. They, apparently, they're set for Barbara. Sorry, for but I keep making noise for everybody listening. I'm just going like this that's, that's, with my right. throat. <laughs> 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 oh, jeez. What the fuck? Ugh. Is that weird? Uh, I don't even know how you would do yes. that. I'm going to answer that for you. Yes, that's weird. You just use the back of your tongue. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so many things out of context here. <laughs>
All right. You're welcome, audio listeners. Did you hear yeah, about the... Uh, do you ever do that with a knob in your gob? No, oh, hello. A knob in your gob. Did you hear about the a hotel in uh, in New York who was going to start fining people if they left negative reviews for them on Yelp? 500 bones. If you had an event there and if you contracted the hotel and if any of your guests left a negative review on Yelp, they would charge you 500 bucks per negative review. Why? What? How can they do that? That's got to be illegal. And then then after the story broke and got out, then they replied with, oh, it was just a joke. We weren't serious. Yeah, sure. I bet they replied yeah, that way. Yeah, right. Yeah. So fucking stupid. You know what? When you said the hotel in New York, I thought you were going to go a different direction. So can they just do that? Is that like... Well, they, you put a deposit down <clears> and then you, if you sign terms and conditions, yeah, pretty much they can do that. If they want to. Like uh, this year for E3, <coughs> hotel accommodations are really, really difficult for two events. They're really difficult for E3. And they're really difficult for San Diego Comic Con. Both the, of them. The podcast. <laughs> Comic Con San Diego or San Diego Comic Con? I'm really confused. <laughs> they're really hard to get uh, hotels for that. And I went on Airbnb and I found it right, right by E3, which is in downtown Los Angeles. I found uh, a loft, two lofts that we could rent in this building, apartment building, for E3. And it was like 190 bucks a night. And it was like, that's not bad. And it could like two different bedrooms. So. We could put two people in there for like a hundred bucks a night each. And I was like, perfect. So I did it and all that stuff. And someone goes, oh, we realized we could charge more for those weekends. So we're canceling your reservation. Wow. That's basic. Basically, wow. that's what the thing came back to me as. Fair play. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's not like a contract. Is it though? You already reserved, reserved at that price. charge me yet. I mean, I guess I could I agreed to that. You know that they can cancel reservations. That seems absurd. I didn't actually go through. I'm not going to read the terms and service. I'm I'm just not that. I don't have that amount of time in my life. So I just did that thing where I Googled like Airbnb reservation canceled, and other people have been canceled. It's like, and then they were quoting the terms of service, and I was like, oh, okay, that's probably what I said. Yeah. It's really shitty, but I guess it's fine. It's pretty shitty. It's pretty shitty. So goddamn, someone on uh, on Twitter asked, uh, this was this Eli Elstein asked, do you think you'll ever get big enough so someone can introduce? <laughs> okay, do you guys think <laughs> you're. <laughs> your your <laughs> iPhone talks like a British dude. Yeah. So, you know someone on Twitter asked, "Do you guys Sorry. think you're going to get big enough so someone can introduce to someone named Jessica from accounting?" I assume they're asking if we'll ever get to the point where we have to introduce <laughs> someone as being from a certain department. I feel like we're already there. We've asked from because we have Ashley from accounting. We both thought of so, thought of the same person. Yeah, yeah, we have Ashley who works you know here on the know, and then we also have Ashley in accounting. Yes, of Chris. In sales, and Chris Damaris. Yeah, so yes, we we definitely will get to that point where we answer your nonsensical question. You know what? I always try to introduce those people um, is, is through game time, but then also through whenever we go to um, the RT podcast at RTX. Because mm -hmm. usually, like, everybody from the company comes to that mm -hmm. showing of, RT, of the podcast. And it's like, I remember uh, two years ago, I introduced Ashley Shoemaker, had her stand mm -hmm. up and say mm -hmm. hello. Because she'd uh, been like working the store that entire freaking time. Yeah, and, then, and then this year uh, at our text, we talked about Mike. Right. Uh, and in the, the context warthog. of bringing the warthog over. Oh, yeah. And our app designer, Mr. Dunkelman. Yeah. <laughs> went and said hello to him. I, I waited till after our text to post my Dunkelmania selfie. But you won Dunkelmania. Yeah, I had all five of us. Now, had, so I took a selfie with Barb's parents at RTX, like on day one. Yeah. And I said, this is my, and I tweeted, this is my best selfie. And then all the staff members started taking selfies with the Dunkelmans mm -hmm. over the course of it. Apparently some attendees did it as well. Did they really? Yeah. That's so awesome. I saw one tweet where it was a picture of my parents from like far away. Like they were somewhere down the hall. And it was like, Barbara, I see your parents. And I'm like, this is fucking creepy. <laughs> that is funny. Dunkelmania from afar. I also yeah. love that they went to the Roost Teeth podcast and not the internet podcast. I told them podcast. too. <laughs> we, we, went out for, we went out to Sixth Street the other night for drinks. Uh, a group of us went out. And I had somebody stop me in the bathroom at the bar, hmm. which I was totally okay with, but it last the conversation lasted way too long. Like it was like they kept wanting to talk about stuff while we're standing in the bathroom. Were you at the urinal? No, I was not at the urinal. So you didn't have cock in hand. I didn't have cock in hand. <laughs> cock had been put away. Yeah. What you about know. knob and gob? No, I had I, I had I had essentially I had cock hands. So I had to, <laughs> I did have to wash. I picture my, like two giant penises. Yeah. At the I'm end picturing of your the fingers. There's actually, there's penises. A, there's actually, ten. There is a porn. That is that. It's Edward Penis Hands. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm pretty sure. I'm not kidding. Why do they, they call it Edward Dick and Hands? I'm pretty I mean, sure it's Nikki Sticks from Motley Crue's in it. Am I remembering that completely wrong? So do, a, does every finger get a piece of action? No, it's just like he's got like two like like. He looks like something. He looks like something that would fight Godzilla. It's what he looks like he's got two. Does it look like Baraka from Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> God. Edward Penis Hands. Who's in that? 
<laughs> you don't look that up on IMDb, right? They don't have porn on IMDb. Edward Penis Hands video, 1991. Is there an IMDb for porn? Uh, you want to hear the premise for this? Why don't we a door to door saleswoman stumbles across Edward, and upon discovering the dot 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 advantages of his hand substitutes, <laughs> brings him home where he falls in love with her daughter. Oh, there we go. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. She was. It was credited as Nikki Six. And so could he spit roast a girl by was, himself? You know what it probably was? It was probably one of those porn stars that just take somebody else's name. Have you mm. ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it depends on his reach, his wingspan. That could be like this. If she's really short, go <laughs> like for it. Like that. I don't think well, you call that a, I don't think you call that spit roast no, at that point. No, she'd be leaning over. You call it a, uh, like a paint yeah, roller. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> or a spit roller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that. A paint roller. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, yeah. You know, have you noticed that there was a point in time, and I, I got fooled by that because I was younger when I heard about this. Um, <laughs> there was a point in time when when porn stars would just take famous people's names. Yeah, they'd add like an X to it, or right? Like James change it a little bit. Dean, what? No, what was it? There is a James <laughs> Dean porn star, isn't there? Or yeah, something? with two E's. Yeah, like what is that? You, they, they can just like assume like famous people's names. Well, people, there's not a infinite amount of names in the world, and you can't trademark a name from what I understand. Has Jordan ever told you about his? Man, you know what my favorite friend? porn star is? What? Wait. San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, <it's, it's laughs> San Diego Comic Con is awesome. April O'Neil. Oh. Jordan is friends with her. Jordan is friends with April O'Neil, who's a porn star. A porn star, but she obviously took her name from Ninja Turtles, April O'Neil. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Unless her name is actually April O'Neil, which is possible. It is not. It's probably not. Her stage the, name. The Ninja Turtles movie comes her out professional next name. week, right? Jordan's a man of mystery. He, he is. is. Why does he know mysterious. April O'Neil, the porn star? I think they were friends in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Friends. I'm not allowed to say anything about Jordan or predictions about Jordan because he gets mad. He gets mad. He hit you once. He gets mad and kicks me in the balls. Kicks you in the right. right. We talked about that last time he was on the podcast. Yeah. I thought he only used to do that when you first met him. Yeah. He still does that? No. Oh, then what do you worry about? I would say Jordan is, Jordan, for a guy who takes stories about us and animates them in more ridiculous ways, he's probably the most private person that works here. Yeah. Probably. There might be someone Maybe here I don't know. making an effort to get to know him. What, Jordan? Yeah. No, I'm saying he doesn't like when we, he actively doesn't like when we talk about certain things. Oh, oops. And I would mention what those were, but he would get mad at me for talking about yeah. them. He would get very mad. I'm not going to bring it up. You go and bring it up. <laughs> You're risking your taint because it'll kick you in the butt. I love you, Jordan. Yeah. You're risking your taint. <laughs> um, people are now posting pictures of, uh, like store employees from RTX, like, hey, we met the we met the people you're talking about. It was like Ashley and oh yeah, like pictures I guess they took with them with themselves over uh, at the store. Yvonne was saying that last year someone asked for her autograph. I think she she, she signed an autograph again this year. She was like, you don't want that. Why do you want that? Yeah. And I was like, Ashley's pretty funny. I didn't really get to know her. Like she worked here for like two years before I even spoke to her because you know I'm scared of people. But she's really funny. Yeah, I, yeah. I never really un until I moved at the old studio until I moved upstairs and had to sit like yeah. in that same little area. She, I never really talked to her. I didn't know until we went to Pax. What was East. Was it Pax East? East mm -hmm. Yeah. And she just has the filthiest mouth. And I just <laughs> oh, you're letting secrets like out. That. Yeah. Her she, and Megan she are really swears good like a champion. It's great. Yeah, they're really fun. And she's Those tall two. as shit. <laughs> yeah, how tall is Ashley? <laughs> she's, she's a college athlete. I think she's six feet. Yeah, she's six feet. Yeah. She seems taller than six feet to me. Hmm. Um, speaking of store stuff, I, I want to mention that thing. Once real again, fast. here we go. Height is always something that people can comment on. If you're tall, people feel totally comfortable commenting on it. Mm -hmm. You know, or I don't, really I don't short. know. I don't know why Steve that is. Merchant does a lot. I don't about think that. if you're short, people are comfortable commenting on how short I you are. They are. No. If you met a really short dude, you wouldn't go, "Boy, you're really short." Well, maybe dude. more girls then. Yeah. A lot of girls would be like, "Yep, you're so tiny." Yeah. You're so little. Well, for a girl, it's cute to be small. I know. Tell me about it. It's like the fucking bane of my existence. <laughs> I hate being tall. You're not that tall. Do you? I'm pretty tall. I hate it. I've hated it my entire life. How tall are you? I'm five foot nine. Height is like curly hair. People are always envious of other people's like. Everyone hairs. wants what they don't have. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants what they don't have. It's... I think it's because I was five nine ever since I was twelve years old. So I was the tall, awkward girl in middle school that nobody wanted to dance with at the school dances. Mm. What would you, What would you change? Everyone. Like, what's something about you that just happened naturally that you would change? Hair? Huh? Please say your face. Gus. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> uh, I don't know. What What, what would change about me? Like, like, you always complain about your hair being like. I, and I would bushy. probably change my hair. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I what, what hair would you go for? Gus's hair? Gavin's. Like who? who Tim in Gettys. <laughs> Tim Gettys hair. Perfect hair. He has good hair. Yeah. Dapper gentleman. I it's, think it's, he like gels it though, so it's yeah, all it like perfect. Like high maintenance hair though. That's fine. Nah. Uh, listen, I can't even put in the time with this fucking hair. It's it's, it's Michael and I have the on. same hair. He knows. This is it. It's like there's a reason why I started wearing a, a hat halfway through the podcast. I like your curly hair, Bernie. What's that? I like it. Well, that's very nice of you. Yeah. Take it out. Out. Take it out. 
Sorry, not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one thing I want to mention real fast uh, that uh, they wanted me to mention uh, Loot Crate as well. I guess that we had p- as part of our Indiegogo. Who's this day? The people over there, the sales <laughs> the man. As part of the uh, Indiegogo fulfillment, we're going to be sending out some Loot Crates this fall. Oh, uh, you people like were asking me why that's on the thing. Right, and they wanted me to remind people uh, about it. You can go to, so Loot Crate's basically just a service that sends out like a bunch of... Uh, like geeky stuff in a Enormous box. Enormous help with the Indiegogo campaign. Thirteen thirty-seven a month. That was and they just send you stuff. Wildly popular. And what, this what one looks to be comic book themed. There's some Deadpool socks. Oh, huh. shocking. You want those? Yes. Patrick has sent you a new image. I have cool There's socks now. A uh, Joker as Loki. Sure. So it's a box that comes once a month. To Loki. And once a month, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's got random stuff in it, but random stuff with a theme. Yeah, and this one's comic themed. Uh, and the ours will be Rooster Teeth themed. And you go to loopcrate.com slash Rooster Teeth to sign up, but mm-hmm. that will not get you the, uh, the special one we said as part of our uh, perks for Indiegogo. Darth Vader keychain. Ooh. Anybody? Give that to um, Blaine. Oh. He likes Star Wars. Oh, look, there's a Rocket Raccoon comic in here. Wow. Should I read this in prep? He's, ca- he's carrying a loot crate. <laughs> I am not kidding. Let there is see. a loot crate in his hand. Let me see. Oh, wow. And there's the purple. You guys want to help pass it over? Yeah, pass it over to him. Um, and there's a few other things. There's like this uh, little villains comic. There's a poster. Uh, there's a CD. Of, Rocket uh, Raccoon was the best part of Guardians of the Galaxy. Absolutely. Nah. There's a, uh, I agree. a what Bowser. Was the best part? I want you magnet. And, Chris Pratt uh, was the best part. Pin. Nope. Rocket, Rocket Raccoon was fucking awesome. Oh, uh, the Rocket. Bernie's got the Rocket. He was Raccoon. just so funny. Sorry. The funniest part of the movie was. Did you get it right? What was the funniest part of the movie? So yeah, thirteen thirty-seven. But shit. Um, I really liked. I don't want to spoil anything. I, my funniest part to me was when Groot went mental and then turned around and smiled at the camera. I like the leg part. The leg part. Yeah. Groot was pretty dope. It was, it was amazing how they got so much comedy out of it. There just was a completely certain CG moment. escape where they needed a leg. Oh, yeah. That I was think, funny I think that, like, <laughs> a Rocket Raccoon, I, honestly, Rocket Raccoon was the, it's, it's a comedy. There's so many fucking characters in it. We were talking about the villain. The villain is literally just like, here is villain. That's it. Yeah. You really <laughs> yeah. don't. A dude born from a puddle with face paint. Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy is, is a villain. He's, it's like he's trying to do <laughs> villainous stuff. And it's like, you know, no justification, nothing. Just like, I want to destroy these people because I don't like them. It's like, well, we like those people, so don't destroy them. That's literally <laughs> the whole thing. And you don't give a fuck at all. You really don't give a fuck. I didn't realize the blue one with the shaved head was the same bird from Doctor Who. It's fucking amazing. She shaved her head for real. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. She cool. looked... She looks really cool. I didn't realize until right at the end of the movie because I saw her name in the opening credits. And I was like, when is she going to be in the movie? And then I realized that it was her the whole time. There's a very important character to the Marvel Universe that appears in Guardians of the Galaxy as well. The guy in the chair? Yep. So they didn't really say that he was going to be in it no. at all. Well, he was at the end of the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. well, you're just with the talking about everybody who hasn't fucking seen the movie yet. Dumbass. <laughs> So, god damn. Yeah, Bernie even tried to cut you off with that. Yep. And <laughs> you're just still fucking plowing well, right I mean, through it. the people who stayed to see the end of Avengers have probably seen Guardians already, right? Pro- probably. That's maybe so. Good maybe point. So. But good point, Barbara. High five. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm sure people that, that saw a billion dollars with a, a box office, they all managed to fit in a hundred million dollars <laughs> in box office in the first weekend. I'm sure that happened. Gus, yeah. did you see the end of the Avengers? Uh, the end of the Avengers, yeah. And have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? No. Busted. Fucking, your fucking theory well, just busted right Dashed different. to pieces. He doesn't see movies within the first two opening weeks. Oh, it depends. Well, well, Whenever it's Barbara, you said anyone anymore. who saw the Avengers. Well, Gus doesn't count. Uh, that's, that's a good point. I'm worthless. By the way, also, absolutely done with that. Abs- well, absolutely done with waiting through the credits well, to see. they don't make you wait for the whole thing now, do they? Oh, they do. Yeah, Never they mind. Do. They do, yeah. Uh, it's always not... like, end of the movie clip. And then there's the properly at the end. Like, that has to dramatically affect how fast they can turn over a movie theater, too. Because now everyone is, it, for Marvel, sitting all the way through the end of the movie. Do they contract? Oh, I guess, yeah, they could be cleaning while the credits are going on. Yeah, they always do, yeah. Yeah, now yeah. they've got to wait for some people to leave. As someone yeah. who used to work in a movie theater, I could tell you that is the most annoying thing of people just sitting through the fucking credits when you're waiting to clean it. And now it's the entire theater sits through for Marvel movies. Yep. I don't know why they train people to do that. Although then they put the time limit in the Alamo. Of like ten minutes. Yeah, clean the whole the fucking fuck place out. in ten minutes. Yeah, I'm sure that's sanitary. I'm sure they disinfect those tables in like oh, yeah. <laughs> eight hundred tables. It's a good thing the lights never come on. <laughs> Full <laughs> intensity. Oh, Black God. light. Yeah, but, uh, there's, there's but still... Galaxy very funny. You should definitely see it. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try to. Get you and out I had and very little faith theater. after seeing the trailer. And Jack was right. It was good. It was it was very good. It was very. very was that hooked on a feeling song in the movie? Oh yeah, it's yeah. It, it's 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 campy and just. It's it's campy. It it's worked funny. really well though. Going going in good spirits because it's it's worth it. 
So and Rocket Raccoon is easily the best part. Of now nah, you're gonna get. How do I get in good spirits? You're gonna get overhyped. <laughs> <laughs> like I just gotta figure out step one. Just get drunk. And, okay, there you That's go. That's how you do it. Good spirits, literally. Uh, so there's our projected <laughs> logo for a screenplay, <laughs> Gus. I one of our fans that made that. One. That's not even centered. <laughs> that came from there's John Burke, John B underscore seven. There's white pixels on the top of that. I obviously didn't make that. Uh, yeah, what that's a garbage. Not fucking correctly. amateur hour over here. Look at the yeah. pixelization on, on the uh, rooster teeth. I could have done that way better. Too compressed. Maybe yeah, he did that in 20 seconds. He did probably do it faster <laughs> than it took me. I'm like a caveman when I have to open Photoshop. <laughs> Jeff likes to come over and watch me anytime he knows I'm using Photoshop. Because well, he, he's suck. really good with it. And I'm just like, like, I don't know, like using tools the wrong way and, and just like really slow about doing everything. Jeff uses Photoshop? Yeah, he's really good I with it. I would have never expected that. Oh, people Jeff are really upset about the way that I opened this comic. Why? Just because I like was like, rip, <laughs> and like <laughs> trying to get into it and bending it and everything else. Oh. Listen, if you ever know anybody who collects comics, and they put those little bags with the tape on it, and it's like the way they treat the comic is like, oh, mm. fuck it, uh, put the comic in. <laughs> oh, treat it nice. Oh, that's one of my... And then your collection that you spent 20 years building <laughs> is worth about five bucks, and your mom gives it away to garage sale. That's what like, happens to every fucking comic I do collection. like treating stuff badly. It's, it's satisfying. Why? Well, like, stuff that people take a lot of care of, if I just don't, it's funny to me. Like, with my Xbox, whenever I shut the disc tray, I'll just slam it as hard as I can. Because it doesn't affect it, like, the Xbox still works. I just didn't it, it screw you recently? Well, it I did. did it in reverse. I pulled it out <laughs> and I pulled the disc tray off. Isn't but. that kind of a spoiler? No! Wait, what's the spoiler? I said a character who's important to the Marvel Universe. Oh. Never mind. There's a lot of important characters. It could be Doctor Doom. It could be <laughs> Silver Surfer. It could be Doctor Who. Could be Doctor Strange. Are they Doctor making a what? Doctor Strange movie? They announced like all the Marvel movies for like ten years. Everything. I don't know. Yeah. I I really don't know. Like, whenever there's a new trailer or something about a, a comic book movie or anything, my wife always asks me, "What's this about? What's that about?" And I always have to tell. I have no idea. I totally missed the boat on all things comic related. That seems surprising to me. I have just no. Yeah, Did you read a lot me, as a kid? Yeah. You read a lot. Yeah. What'd you read? Ah, everything. Re Books. Of yeah. Mice and Men. Yeah. yeah. Mice and Men. You read uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, read that one. I love that one. You're the that would be obscure. What's that? In my head, you're the nerdiest of the founding members of Rooster Teeth. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. Why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you read like school books or anything else? Yeah, both. Did the you school read books, Catcher, Catcher in the Rye? Did you yeah, read that? Catcher in the Red. Hated Catcher in the Rye. Hated Catcher in the Rye too. Hated it. Did Fuck you read On the Road? Yep, read On the Jack Road. Jack Kerouac. <laughs> Garbage. Overrated Gar pieces of shit. All gar I, I, I totally <laughs> couldn't goes, agree with like, you more. Like, Catcher in the Rye is the Donnie Darko of books. Yeah. <laughs> it it is. absolutely is. That no, is you know what? It's, it's, you know, if you, if you read Catcher in the Rye and then you, you go see Rebel Without a Cause, the James Dean movie, mm -hmm. where he's like this big rebel, it's like, shut the f give, just This kid's not even interesting. Mm -hmm. I, rebel Without a Cause is like, I, it must have been very revolutionary for the time. And it's just like one of those things where other movies have built on it since then. Like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Which yep. I imagine at the time was great, but it's now it's fucking awesome. That's still you're trapped. It's you're still trapped. a great movie. No, it bloody isn't. Absolutely, it is. You're a lunatic. Do not talk shit about you're that movie. You're a British fucking lunatic. What do you mean, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? What's not good about movie? that movie? I imagine it was cool and like all hit back then. It was kind of cool that he was skipping school and doing all that crap. That's not impressive now. Who gives a shit? Why? Why is that a movie? It's still entertaining. And people are like, oh yeah, this like sums up our generation. Who says that? Who's, <laughs> who sat you down and told you Ferris Bueller's Day Off defines a generation? Some people that I know. Defines a generation? I don't think anyone would ever claim Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What is, what is good about that movie? Uh, the screenplay episode it's one. It's fun. Go. What's good about that movie? It's fun. Yeah, it's just a fun movie. Go in with good spirits and enjoy <laughs> the ride. It's fun. The writing is clever. It's funny. I don't know what's not good about it. Yeah. You tell us. You're the one with the, out, with the, the uh, outlying opinion. Is that the way it works? You have to say what's not good about something? It's kind of boring, to be honest. What's slow? Yeah. I thought I, I would I would assume that you would see Ferris Bueller's Day Off and you would love it. Everything about it's great. The running gag with Save Ferris that's like threaded through the whole thing. The whole character of the sister, that's a side character. She's an amazing character. The, the one from uh, Dancing movie. Dirty Dancing, yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Grey. <laughs> dancing mm -hmm. movie. Principal Rooney's great. Principal Rooney's great. Even his secretary is great. All the characters Cameron. in Ferris, Ferris Bueller's Day Off are fantastic, except for maybe Sloane. She's a little thin. Mm. But every, did you see it recently? No. How many times have you seen that movie? Uh, my brother worked in a movie theater, and so I got to go sit and watch free movies. So there's like a two year span where I saw every fucking movie like five or six times. Critters. Critters. Tremors. Good Critters Two specifically. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. RoboCop, all those movies, like in that that time frame, I just went and saw. Bitches and... leave. <laughs> Is that your one quote you remember from RoboCop? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they and, were quoting uh, Robocop on the uh, and cards. Go Robo. You... <laughs> and what? Go, go Robo. Robo. What's go? Who says Go Robo? When he like wakes up at the beginning and he becomes Robocop and he's walking through all that line of people. One of the guys like cranes his head into his view and goes, "Go Robo." Paul Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven is such a great director. He's directed some of the best movies ever. He directed RoboCop. He directed Starship Troopers. He directed uh, Love Starship Troopers. Uh, Basic Instinct, and he directed um, Showgirls. Showgirls is such a great fucking movie. It's so it's like such bad it. cinema. It's so great. Have you ever seen Long Kiss Goodnight? Yeah. Where Samuel Jackson goes flying out of that building. <laughs> Listen, Long Kiss Goodnight <laughs> has some of the best one-liners ever in like, a movie. When he goes, he goes. When Samuel Jackson says, "You made an assumption," and you know what they say when you make an assumption? You make an ass out of you and umption. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just a great line. And when he talks about the girl that, that's jogging with the big boobs, and yeah. when, he, when he like cranes and he almost his neck, swerves off the road. He swerves off the road. Jenny Davis goes, "Why are you looking?" And he's all excited because he saw a girl with big boobs. He's like, he's like, he goes, "That you got to stop and look at something like that." He goes, he goes, those. He goes. You see those coming around the corner, you got time to comb your hair. <laughs> I, just thought it was, I just thought it was a great line. It's full of great one liners. And, and that was that was Rennie Harlan, right? Who? Uh, that directed Long yeah. Kiss Goodnight. Yeah. Rennie Harlan like made a bunch of movies Wasn't with that Gina, her husband? Gina Davis, yeah. And they're married, and then they made a movie that completely bankrupted a film company. Was that a shitty movie? It was they're, they're the pirate movie. What the fuck is that pirate movie called? Pirate movie. Yeah, it was a pirate movie with Gina Davis, Davis and it bankrupted Carol Co. completely. Oh, Carol Co. Yeah, Remember I forgot Carol about them. Terminator. They made Terminator. Yeah. yeah, Terminator. They had the suck, fuck, the fucking C logo. Yeah, they had huge franchises in this movie. What the fuck was that called? The Gina Davis pirate movie. Was it the movie that had um, Kurt Russell? Cutthroat Island. Cutthroat Island. Thank you. <laughs> Cutthroat Island. Obviously. I don't remember that. People I was, don't I like was, uh, pirate movies. Apart from pirates. You say people don't like pirate movies? I'm, I think I'm there's a Pirates of, of the Caribbean franchise that may disagree with you. I was thinking of Waterworld, but that's not really Pirates. Is it Pirates? I never saw Waterworld. I think Pirates and Zombies are probably the two. Waterworld had an incredible budget for such a piece of crap. Yeah, it's a huge budget. Yeah. That, that's all I know about that movie. I never, I know Kevin Costner's in it, and the world's flooded. Yeah, I know that he's in it. He has gills. That's about it. Cutthroat what? Island had a total cost of as high as $115 million, and the U.S. <laughs> total gross was $10 million. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, and that was in 19... That's like... 96. That's like setting fire to a room full of money. Yeah. I mean, listen... No, it's not, like a mansion full of money. <laughs> not many movies had $100 million budgets back in the 90s. Not many yeah. movies had that. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think the budget for Jurassic Park was? It was I, think, I think it was like... I think I looked it up recently. I think it was like $80 million. I want to say it was $60 million or something like that. I'm going to guess $75 million. And Jurassic Park was at the beginning of the 90s. You know? Yes, and it 94. used a 92. lot of computer animation that hadn't been used before. Yeah, and Terminator 2. I think Terminator 2 was a... Yeah, production budget, $63 million. On uh, what? Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, uh, sorry. Grossed uh, $402 million. Terminator 2 had an interesting trailer. There was that, like, really extended trailer where they... It's one of the worst trailers for a movie ever made. The one where they're, like, putting together the, the robot? Yes. No, well, there's a whole there's a, there's a, there was a trailer for Terminator. I'm gonna spoil what happens in Terminator Two if you've never seen the franchise. You, prick. you should watch it. I'm a prick. Terminator Two. No one will remember this because the trailer. I mean, they, they all know the premise of the movie now. The trailer gave away the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger was good. Oh, in yeah. the second trailer, in the yeah. second movie, it did. The whole first act of that movie is a they big twist. That. They're setting up. But everybody knew it going in because the trailer completely gave away that Arnold was a good guy. Yeah, that, in that the was so stupid because the whole movie, there's there's a lot of ambiguity and even oh, Edward there's Furlong's a moment with the T1000 yeah. as a cop, and the reason why T1000 is a cop is because he looks like a good guy, and then the Terminator T1000 are coming down the hallway, and he's got the roses, yeah, and it looks like he's there to kill John Connor, and oh nope, he's the good guy, and that's the big twist. But you're like, this isn't even a moment. They mm -hmm. completely fucking ruined. Maybe that. they were worried that the sequel wouldn't be watched unless they. Did something crazy with they the trailer. They did give a rationale for why they did it. I can't remember what it was. I guarantee today, there's no fucking way James Cameron lets that trailer go out today. Mm. There's no way. I think they did something with the other trailer where that it's just kind of mechanical building the robot. Think, yeah, thing. that was like the earlier one. I think they spent like a hundred grand on shooting that. <laughs> and that wasn't used in the movie, right? That was no. just stuff that was, it was just like for... a, it was none of the shots in that were in the movie. It was just mm -hmm. like shots of them building a robot. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, Terminator 2 cost $102 million to make. Damn. And that was like 91? 91. Yeah. It, it, it cost almost double, almost double, 
Not really. Costs a lot more than what Jurassic Park costs to make, which is funny because I would put those things like mm-hmm. totally the same. Terminator level. Two is a really good movie. Yeah, Terminator Salvation costs two hundred million to make. Yes, yeah. that's like two Cutthroat Islands. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's like two mansions of money. What was? It? Can you guess what the budget of the first Terminator was? Oh God, I want to say forty million. Fifty. No, no, six million, maybe. Uh, the if first. that. That's stop motion. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I can't believe we're launching a. Uh, Film and TV podcast. We're talking about movies and games and stuff this week. But uh, budget was $6 million. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Holy it. shit. $6.4 million. Yeah, James Cameron was like copying, going to universities and copying, photocopying how to make movie film like books, like educational books about how to expose film and stuff. Guys, if, guy, that guy is a fucking genius. I know he's supposedly like really impossible to work with. But he had a really hard time with early movies though, with crew. He shot a lot of stuff at Pinewood Studios in England. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't used to the way a British film crew works. And like they were just giving him shit because he wanted to do it the American way. I think he's just, I think it's the Cameron way. I think he's exceptionally demanding. And I haven't, I haven't ever heard a story that said anything different about him. He's just, but, I mean, you, when you fucking get on walk board. the walk, I mean, dude, he's get on board. Proven himself. Yeah, do it his way. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, you are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. James Cameron's right. Yeah. <laughs> there's no. no two ways. There's like, there's not even a discussion. <laughs> oh, what? He means, you know, he's making a movie for, for $400 million. That'll never make money. Biggest movie ever made. Yeah. You know what was I mean? Was that Avatar? Avatar, yeah. I yep. mean, every, everyone, everyone was said like, it was going to be a flop. <laughs> well, the Titanic, everyone was like, he's building a 90% scale replica of the Titanic. Why not the whole 100% scale replica? He's wasting so much money. It's a flop. No, fucking he, biggest movie up to that point. Then, they then get, Avatar again. Like, it was like 11 Academy Awards, I think. <laughs> Yeah, then Avatar again. People were like, oh, he's wasting so much money on this movie. It's never going to make money. Biggest movie ever. Yeah. yeah. Is it still the biggest movie ever? Yeah. <laughs> yep. For in terms of box office, yeah, nothing's past it. But that's just because of the, techni- the technical way it was made. Go ahead. It's the biggest movie because of technicality. I thought it was... Uh, what, do you mean? what does that mean? Well, it's not a good movie. Oh, it's, it's the biggest movie ever made because it, it was weird. Gross the amount, the, the largest yeah. amount. Yeah. Yeah, but it, people watched it because it was kind of different to other movies. I think people went to see it because it was such a, they knew it was going to be such a huge spectacle. Yeah. yeah. Like, and some people play that right. Jaws was the same way. When they were making Jaws, it was a huge flop. I think the original budget for Jaws was $3 million, and it ended up costing $10 million in the 70s. And Oof. the shark kept breaking and everything like that. And Steven Spielberg even says that the, the shark breaking and them unable to show the shark in the first, like, 45 minutes of the movie, it made him... More like Alfred Hitchcock and less like Roger Corman mm-hmm. because he would just have the shark from the beginning, like yeah. rah, 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 chewing on shit, but <laughs> yeah. he couldn't do it. So he had to do this thing with like this, like never see the shark. You yeah. only see it under the water and like stuff glimpses. like that. So totally badass. Made Jaws a classic movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, Jaws, they were so con- convinced it was going to be a flop. They put Jaws out in the summer and that's when nobody went to see movies in the summer back then because people were out doing outdoor activities. And so they put movies in the summer to let them die basically and it made the summer blockbuster season. The reason yeah. we watch movies in the summer now is because of Jaws. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely crazy. That's so yeah. cool. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap But the up. thing was is that, is that Steven Spielberg, every time someone would go wrong and they, their budget would go up, he'd go, movie's just going to be that much better. Look how much, <laughs> mo- look how much money we're spending on this movie. He totally got it back Fucking then. Optimist. Glass yeah. is definitely half full. Avatar grossed uh, $760 million domestic. Worldwide, it has grossed $2.7 billion. That's a, lot like of, that's a lot of industry. So two billion worldwide, or yeah. outside of the U.S. Two billion worldwide. Yeah, so it did two billion outside the U.S. Fucking hell, crazy. Dude, yeah, and I'd Titanic. Like just for reference 40 here, quid towards that, Titanic did one point five billion outside the U.S. Two point two billion total. Wow, crazy. Lots of lots of bees. Doing it right. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Cut we'll the back island. Ten million tomorrow with an episode of Screenplay. Wednesday with an episode of The Patch, and next Monday with another episode of RT Podcast. Bye. I love you. Get out. Thanks for listening to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. We had some good times, we knew it couldn't last. Gus cut it off again, as he tends to do. So here's Chris and Kara Brandon, too. Another week, another hour, shooting the shit. Talking about shows or something stupid, Gavin did.